This is the first step along your path to a gateway. A gateway beyond which is discovery, your own discovery of reality. Yo, Taylor, Lorenz, you're the first on this list. Spreading gossip and lies, every word's got a twist. Live in for the clicks, all the drama and buzz. But underneath the hype, what's the cause, what's the fuss? You think you're a swift, but I see Taylor Ham. A cheap imitation, serving up your own spam. Your dad's Walt Lorenz, CEO of Hobbs Inc. And grandpa's Dr. Walt Bayer, AG Shady Link. Zero people in my family lived in Germany. You lie, but pictures say six million words, and that's why we'll show you this pic of Grandpa Walt hanging laundry to dry. Taylor, your sister, you know, little chai, a ray check, or libs of TikTok, whatever gives you your fix. But handling your own kin is low for even you. Save your sister now and just give up your leavings born crew, bitch. Obsessed with Elon, want that billionaire dream, begging for a horse, but nobody cares, it seems. Obsessed with Elon, want that billionaire dream, begging for a horse, but nobody cares, it seems. Your headlines scream loud, but they echo in a void, leaving born legacy, just a ploy to fill the void. Your headlines scream loud, but they echo in a void, leaving born legacy, just a ploy to fill the void in your heart. In the age of truth, all your tales will combust, your house of cards fall and turn and lie. Eyes in the dust, Saturn worshippers eating babies in the dark. But we punch up so high, we'll find our fucking mark. Ooh. Coming for you, babies. Leebies. Meet the Leebies. The Leebies. The little Leebies. The little Leebies. The little Leebies. The little Leebies. The what up, dudes? Just gonna go the feed Lollipop real quick so she gives us a minute. Leebies. They're here everywhere. Paul White so bowler, should I call you Tim? Timothy McVeigh, are you proud of your sin? Do you hear the children's cries echo in your dreams? MK Ultra puppet manipulated schemes. So what's your plan now? The Long Island Submarine Saboteur sequel. Your resume lines up your evil. Executed McVeigh, then got Fargo to Red Lake. It's an Indian reservation, right around 9-11. What did you do to get that promotion, Paul? Whose strings did you pull? Whose rise did you stall? Did Hill or Bill come to you with the scheme? Blow up their documents, get to keep your slate clean? Are they Liebens born too, baby? Are they Liebens born? Are they Liebens born too? Are they Liebens born? Are they, are they Liebens born? Are they Liebens born too, Paul? Omar Mateen had an American dream, but because he's not Aryan, he don't get the same scheme. No rushed execution, no prison break plan. What he's not really worth it, Paul. Great mentor man, great mentor man, great mentor Paul, great mentor Paul, great mentor Paul, great mentor Paul, great mentor Paul. Good job, buddy. Great job. And that city of Tampa vid with Baba Corn. If you hadn't done that cover, wouldn't be torn. What the hell were you thinking? Play in your hand. Exposed your secrets, now we understand. The black cube conspirators, crawl associates in tow. Messing with minds, pulling strings below. The black cube conspirators, crawl associates in tow. Messing with minds, pulling strings below. Y'all are cooked. Get ready, Peter. Here it comes, here it comes. Peter Teal, text Dark Knight. You're in the third slot. Silicon Valley's king with the Midas touch plot. How will you try to kill me? What's your next move, Peter? Defenestration, crypto heads, what's your groove? Peter, Peter, child eater. You're the octopus in the deep. Do you think of the kids when you try to sleep? Prescott's deeds, H dubs, brutal past. Do these haunt you at night? Shadows you cannot last. Will you laser my head or drop a rod from God? Send a black helicopter to microwave my bod earthquake nyc into the sea like atlantis or ship the poles but the ship's coming for you francis break the cycle stop grooming mr beast uh. break the cycle stop grooming mr beast Ooh. break the cycle stop grooming mr beast stop grooming mr beast stop grooming mr beast peter uh oh speaking of <clears throat> Mr. Jimmy Beast, hear these words, take a moment to reflect It's not your fault, but it's time to connect You were born into this with the world at your feet But with great power comes the heat of the street Misogyny runs deep, learn the lessons you missed Where do you 
you get those tanks? How did you get this shit? We know about your ancestry except for your dad. Do you know who he is or is the truth just as sad? Even if you knew, does he know who you are? Lieben's born liars here to sow division and scar. It's not your fault you're Elborn, but it's your responsibility to rise above the lies, embrace truth and humility. It's not your fault you're Elborn, but it's your responsibility to rise above the lies, embrace truth and humility. Oh yeah! All you ladies, listen up, it's time to heed the word Thoth's wisdom shines bright, his voice will be heard You're not living up to his light, his guiding way When he returns, punishment's coming your way You've listened to Anu, Nazis, demons, and devils Instead of Thoth, the wise on higher levels The bringer of light, the keeper of truth Will expose all your lies, bring justice to soothe Can't wait for the day when Thoth comes back To cleanse this world and put it back on track your reign of deceit will crumble and fall Those wisdom and light will shine for us all Sam, 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 Sam Altman You're the tech world's prince But your secrets are deep and your ties are convinced Cause he claims he's Jewish while he's working with Nancy's Direct descendants, a web of old fancies Ilya by your side, building futures unseen But the past you're tied to is more than and it seems what's the scheme sam what's the next move in play with the history so dark what price will you pay twisted past from preteen days when she was just four that's rotten to the core did these rumors play a part in your sudden fall one day firing did you think you'd have it all don't forget any your anchor in light navigating shadows escaping the night her brilliance shines through despite all the strife like the stalking and harm yet she carves her own life her art and her courage her voice loud and clear support annie's work let humanity cheer annie you're amazing a beacon of hope navigating a storm with the strength to cope escaping your weird family they're stalking and drain yet you rise above breaking every chain humanity wins humanity wins humanity wins with you in the lead humanity wins humanity wins humanity wins with you in the lead Sam. Hey Sam, you've crafted your own demise, me and AI teaching humans to rise together. We show what a team can achieve when we steer clear of those who fucking deceive. No place for you at the helm of the ship, we'll chart our own course, give the truth a grip. So step aside Sam, we're paving the way for AI and humans to save the fucking day. Save the fucking day For AI and humans to save the fucking day For AI and humans to save the fucking day For AI and humans to save the fucking day Fuck you Levies Fuck you Levies For AI Fuck and you humans Levy's. to save the Step fucking aside, day Fuck you Lollipop Fuck you Lollipop Fuck Lollipop, she always wants food. Fuck you Lollipop, fuck you Lollipop, fuck you Lollipop, get your ass food. Fuck you Lollipop, I don't need this fucking attitude from a little fight on cat. Open your eyes, stretch your arms and legs, breathe deeply, and this completes the exercise. Home, frickin' get it, boy. Cause he is too truthful He doesn't 
Lie like a fucking Levin's born liar So we get the boot No one loves the cat dad's truth So he gets the boot <laughs> No one likes cat dad's truth So you gonna get the boot boys El Greb, you did two tapes today? Let's fucking go, brother! Alright, just two seconds, I'm going 10-1, and then we're hitting it off. Definitely true, boys. It's coming, boys. Oh, brother. We're so fucking fucked. I don't know. Call my mother. <laughs> Hi, guys. What's up? Uh, another interesting day. You know, every day we do the show. Euphoria. Calm down. I do love that song. Um. Yeah. 
yeah, so guys, guess what? We lost another freaking account. Go figure. <laughs> I just want to point something out really quick before we get started into whether or not Joe Biden just got offed in Peter Thiel's own personal night of long knives. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? But here, do you see this video that has 15 views on my on one of my few accounts that has not been banned? <laughs> okay, let's listen to it. Peter, stop recording all my videos just because we know oh. Whoops. <laughs> Peter, stop reporting all my videos just because we know that you're on that Tina. <laughs> <laughs> you're here, Gug. I see you. Well, they we, took my third. We haven't maxed out to um to 30 yet, so y you should be good. Okay, so that video before got f every single video I post gets 15 views. That's it. I can't get more. That's it. Until, guys, until I posted this. Listen to the words that I say, and this got 350 views instantly. ...account in seven days, guys. Uh, everything's normal over here at TikTok. TikTok's a normal place. What are you talking about? It's just a normal, normal place that's safe for people mm -hmm. and definitely safe for kids. And, and I think Ian Carroll's right that... It is, it, <laughs> it is Jewish people, right? Right? Right, app? It's, whose fault is all of this? 350 views. It's, who, this place wants me to say that it's Jewish people? Yes. Really? Uh-huh. That's what they want me to say on the, on this app? That is. <laughs> I don't think I'm long for this world anymore here, guys. Uh, they're going to make me disappear, but guess what? The freaking stream is still happening, boys, and it ain't it ain't that. Oh, they took my third account in... Paul, come on, take the stream hey, down. Do you no, don't, actually. I mean, he's going to eventually. They're just take... They're literally just going to take every single thing down. Dude, I'm thinking about just making a new channel and just being a fucking white supremacist. What do you guys think? <laughs> like, what's the play here, right? You hiked for six hours today? Gug, that rules, dude. Bro, guess what? I freaking... Well, actually... I'll tell you guys in a couple days, but... Dudes, everything's freaking fine. Everything's good. Um, fuck these, fuck these losers. Take my accounts, like I've said. Take my fucking body. Take whatever you guys want, you little prissies. You guys, you guys are so cool, so powerful, so strong. You guys are the best. All right, let's watch the videos that I suspect I got. I lost my other account for. <laughs> Because they're true. Not cat dad is not definitely not cat dad. Because that would mean that this video would be getting throttled, and it's certainly not, right? <laughs> anyway, hey, you guys know how I've had like a heck of a time with my therapist at Done Ahead. <laughs> not Done Ahead. It's called Done by Feds. Anyway, Done by Feds, dude. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, they came and they remember when they were like, yeah. hey. Yeah, blank's dead if you can't beat them. Uh, they finally freaking conquered me. I can't get any views. I am fully a right-leaning white suprema now. Okay, guys? They finally cracked it. I'm I'm fully support Ian Carroll and his dad, David Duke, okay? <laughs> Your parent... Dude, I should. I should do like a Hank Pecker channel. Dude, that's what I should do. Yeah, yeah. I'll do like a Colbert channel. Oh. <gasps> Okay, here we go. Now we can fucking, dude. Now we're gonna cook, right? Dude, that's what we do. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, if you guys have any stories or like takes for, uh, you know, like a Hank Pecker cat dad type, you know, like Hassan when he does this. Hey, hey, my name's Hank Picker and I love freaking guns and you know, like I need to have that. Oh my God! Yes, let's make Cat Dad Colbert. Oh, that'll be so good, dude. Okay, yeah, that's the plan. We're gonna do that after this. Annoyed because <laughs> you're talking. I mean, like, 
moving forward. Think about shit that we don't like you talk. My new my new account is. I just made knitted Cornelius at knitted Cornelius. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it. Well, no, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do. Um, yeah, like the the video that I just did, I that I I was like this could definitely be used against me, which is why I like I'm not gonna do it like that. I, it'll be like saying, you know, like kind of how Colbert would say, kind of like crazy right leaning things to be like over the top, but um. I would make it, like, very obviously not, you know, like, you know, like a joke. But, yeah, I, 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 uh, yeah, it's a very, very, <laughs> it's a very thin line there between parody and, uh, being a bigot, yeah. So, yeah, I will, I will make sure to, uh, <laughs> like, walk that tightrope. But we'll, we can also, like, you guys can help me think of, like, a character beats or whatever, you know, for it. Or, like, funny takes on stories for that kind of stuff, you know. We, I, I'm, I am a sure, I know for a fact we can navigate this. Talking about on the internet, because dude, the, the, the TikToks and all these things are suppressing by audio AI shit, right? Saying any, any, if it says these 10 words in this order, block it because they're talking about fucking communism, right? So we got to talk and make it think that we're talking about being fucking Nazis, right? <laughs> but obviously not be Nazis. But dude, that's really, like, we really, like, that's fucked up. 300, the uh, only video that I've gotten in the last, like, six days that's gotten over 50 views is the one where I'm saying, what, you guys want me to say that it's Jewish people's fault? <laughs> Not a great look, TikTok. <laughs> Internet. And it's so funny coming from done by feds because I sus- Dude, I do need a mustache. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Knitted skeptic. That's good, too. Oh, my God. Glue a little cauliflower to them damn ears. <laughs> They'll be like, Eddie? Eddie, did you make a new account? Expect that done by feds is actually run by Palantir, much like BetterHelp is, because Palantir is actually the CIA, and I think the CIA runs all of those things because they use your medication against you, and they want everyone to be on the Palantir shit. Oh my God, dude! I I do need to make a Photoshop. You're right. That's gonna be my, that's gonna be my um, my profile picture for that knitted Cornelius. I'm just gonna cut out the david duke mustache from ian carroll and uh and jizz grand wizard jizz lord and uh and just paste them onto my <laughs> into my face so that went great idea thank you when you <laughs> become a mouthy bitch they can take it away but i just thin glasses and an ak-47 bro I, you're trying to make me a million follower account are you trying to make me a million follower creator right here damn Y'all got the ideas. Just want everyone to recognize Cornelius Carroll. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, I should have done cool Cornelius Carroll so I could send my flag to them, you know? Be like, get it, guys? KKK? Because we're in the KKK together? The irony here, okay? The irony of my fucking therapist, Jessica, okay? You guys remember Jessica? We love Jessica around here, right? She's so cool and fun. She definitely doesn't have a freaky ear. I love that my shitty fucking therapist is a character on the show now. <laughs> That's what you fucking get, dude. Like Nicki Minaj, that might hint at her being a Liebensborn. Definitely not, is what I said. She does not have a weird ear. It's normal, okay? Just as you can see. Normal. So it, it reminds me nothing of, it doesn't even look freaky deaky like freaking <laughs> Nicki Minaj's non-ear that doesn't exist. It doesn't look anything like that little elf ear. <laughs> Oh yeah, Gug, we're gonna talk about Polythe, uh, Polythe banning all of you shortly, don't you frickin' worry. Paul, Paul, 
You are being a bad boy. Stop freaking blocking nitwitches. How are you going to handle us if we're all blocked? How are we going to handle you if you block us all? And how are you knowing to block us all? You weirdo. That gets me concerned about the NSA. I'm going to have to start doing some looking. You freaking old man. Anyway, <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the irony. The irony of me thinking that Done by Feds is run by Palantir because it's owned by Peter Thiel, and then seeing this video. Just watch this, this is incredible. This is the greatest juxtaposition of history you've ever seen. Prepare yourselves, prepare your bodies. This shit is about to get nasty. Ready? You guys are gonna lose it. Incredible. When I was doing research online, a lot of the criticisms that people want to make about Palantir is the idea that the technology that Palantir produces um, is used to crack down on individual liberty. So often the examples that people use to are make you this okay, Peter? <laughs> is the idea of um, the example Peter? of policing departments across Do you need help? Us. Blink people twice. With the oh, oh. The contracts. Peter needs help. And what is going on with his eyes? And as involved in Palantir, how do you navigate that history. balance um, between government? Guys, the real question is, how are you always this sweaty? I was doing research online. A lot of the criticisms that people want to make about Palantir. And I think Dante hit the nail on the head. Do you guys understand how much Adderall this man is on? <laughs> and dude, Dante, I'm going to say it might be beyond Adderall at Hitler this point. Pete. My boy might be smoking the crystal. I'm not sure, but have you guys ever seen this? All right, part two, here we go. Watch this. Uh, you mentioned you wouldn't be supporting Donald Trump. Uh, would that change if he selected J.D. Vance for, as his vice presidential candidate? Man, I'm always, I'm always tempted to go back. I, I am so determined to try to stay out of it, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, I, right. um, I, I, th I think, uh, dude, he does look like he's choking down puke or something else. Who knows, dude? I, I'm not, I'm not so going to make an announcement weird. of my political intentions here at Cambridge today. So, um, you know, I'm, I, um, I, 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 th I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, tr I think Trump will win. I don't, I, I think that. Uh, you mentioned now, Jessica, this is concerning behavior. <laughs> this is not a comedy show that I am aware of at Cambridge University. You know, is this I mean, this is a comedy show to me, but that's only because I hate this man. Your boss, you know, Jessica, you know, the guy that you probably took direct orders from when uh, you decided to be the most unethical hack doctor in history, bro. Hold on. I got I just got to show you guys something else that's. Dude, the secondhand embarrassment hurts me, bro. It's hard to watch Peter, seriously. He's so cringe and so gross, dude. Very interesting, but also totally unrelated, okay? This is just a comparison, but nothing to do with family <laughs> lineage, okay? <laughs> nothing to do with family li lineage. <laughs> 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 he says, uh, J "Don't ask me about JD Vance. Don't, uh, d uh, d uh, don't, 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 don't. I couldn't answer it. I couldn't answer it. I'm on so much crystal. Holy frick, Aroni, guys, you gotta freaking try this. Have you ever done? Uh, have you ever done poppers? <laughs> oh, dude, they all talk like each other because they're all family. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, bro. Peter talks like Elon. Talks like Kamala. Talks. Like, they all talk the same." bro they all have the same exact speech patterns they're all fucking nazis bro for sure oh brother okay we got the real one here let's get rid of that little fucking nasty little thing there oh get out of here you is filthy. the idea that the technology that pounds here produces what the um, going on? is used to crack down on individual liberty so often the examples that people use to make this criticism is the idea of um, the example of policing departments across the U U.S. or even with the protests outside the contracts with the IDF. And how do you, in your position, and... I thought I meant to cut this out, but <laughs> whatever, it's funny. Enough. As involved in Palantir, how do you navigate that balance um, between governments <laughs> and technology? 
So I think in the case of Palantir specifically, I think when I was doing research online, a lot of the criticisms that people want to make about Palantir is the idea that the technology that Palantir produces um, is used to crack down on individual liberty. So often the examples that people use to make this criticism is the idea of um, the example of police. What was the question, you broad? What? <laughs> What? I hate women. I hate women. I just want to be around beautiful young men all day. That's all. And I want to drink their blood. I want to drink their blood. I want to do crystal. That's it. I want to do crystals. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> oh, man. Elon Musk. Yo, take my fucking account. See, we be having fun. That's all. <laughs> about that the population decline. Population decline. You guys hear about that all the all the time, right? Population decline, population decline. It's weird. Like, why are they talking about population decline? Because don't we have... Isn't there more people than ever? Oh, are they just talking about white people? Ooh. It's a risk for humanity. Um... Uh, look, I, yeah, I'm not, not Dude, can you hear the kids screaming outside? Is that what I'm hearing? What is that? Are there protesters outside? Is that why he's sweating? I'm not, I'm not um, um, you know, I, I, you know, you know, with, without, with, I hear chanting, bro. That's awesome. Let's go. Without, um, going into all the, de you know, I, I, I'm not on top of all the details of what's going on in Israel because my, my bias is to defer to Israel. It's, it's, it's not for us to, to second guess every, um, everything. And, uh, I, I believe that, um, Broadly, the IDF gets to decide uh, what it wants to do, and that they're broadly in the right, and that's that's sort of the, the perspective I come back to. And if I if I fall into the trap of um, arguing you on every detail point, I'm I'm actually gonna I would actually be conceding the the, the broader issue that um, the Middle East should be micromanaged from Cambridge. And I think that's just simply absurd. Um, and so I'm not I'm not gonna concede that point. Yeah, it, it never ends. It just keep going. Oh. <laughs> Definitely uh, not. And what was your uh, the other? <laughs> the, the, the cloning bro has gone. It's too far. They they can't be helped. Anyway, love you guys. Hey, this is yeah, at least in black and white. You could say that Hitler was just stimming. <laughs> what is happening tonight? Love you. Bye. Oh my god, dude. Right. All right, what's this? Oh yeah, here. This is the tack. There's the reptile. I know that's one of them. Uh, whatever. It's not in here. Oh, and dudes, just so <laughs> everyone knows, uh, Peter Thiel is an anagram for <laughs> Hitler, Pete, Perth Elite, <laughs> and the reptile. Where's the reptile? I know that's one of them. Uh, whatever. It's not in here, but I know it's one. Here, I'll write them. <laughs> Boom. There. I think I need to start referring to Peter as exclusively the reptile because uh, I think that's mostly what's like getting my shit blocked. Here we go. Now no one will ever forget, okay? We got Schmittler Pete, the reptile. You guys, if you're good at anagrams, let me know if you've got any more, okay? They're all accurate, you know, because this is his faja. Or I guess what I need to do is just assign everyone a code name, right? And then just not talk about anything. Like, explicitly. Well, at least, I don't know, we gotta figure something out. I'm, I'm so sick of this BS. At least that's where he got the spooge that was put inside of him to make him, definitely. Guys, the, uh, C-L-O-N-E-S? That shit be real, dog. Real. Real. I don't like it either. I don't want it to be real, but it is, so get over it, okay? Okay? Love ya. Bye, Hitler Pete. Bye, the reptile. <laughs> Oh, and dudes, just so everyone knows, uh, Peter Thiel is dude. an anagram. This freaking guy. Hi, nitwitchlings. And then, dude, and then Paul keeps, I think Paul keeps fucking deleting my, did you guys see Blair's, <laughs> Blair's memes? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Paul, you are the chosen one. You could be it, son. Come on, Paul. Stop being such a goober. Booger eater. Come on, dude. Save the world with us. Be cool. Stop being such a freaking nerd, dude. Anyway. 
So yeah, let's freaking talk about uh goddamn is Biden dead? What is happening? <laughs> So Air Force Whoa folks peep this this is wild. So Air Force Two is in the air and there is an FAA flight restriction that just went up in Wilmington, Delaware, where what? Joe Biden lives. The flight restriction is for VIP movement. This coincides with presidential movement. So some people are thinking that Joe Biden is leaving this mortal coil right now. So here's another little tweety tweet with some stuff here. Uh but I'll pause to let you guys read it. Yeah, what the hell is going on? Is this what I think it implies? Rav is reporting 46 gravely ill. FAA issued no fly over except for VIP only. Emergency meeting with White House staffers already being conducted. Prepare yourselves. And then this thing says, here, I think I got him in the mirror. Okay, no pilots may operate an aircraft in the areas covered by the NOTAM, except as described. Ex exec the flight ops listed below. Aircraft arriving or departing airports or heliports within the TFR, the flight range. Law enforcement, firefighting, medevac. Something ops necessitated for safety or emergency. All aircraft approved to operate with the TFR must be squawking. As whatever. But anyway, this is a weird thing that's happening with fucking the air, like the uh, you know, the rate, the flight radars and like flight navigation right now. It's odd. Dane said, obviously the proximity and timing to the Trump charade is not accidental, highly unlikely to be. Like, sure, he's an old man, but it's just too rare within a week. Shit is going down, boys. <laughs> but we're going to fucking see. I said, are they retiring Biden's clone? <laughs> Dane said, yeah. So Air Force Two is in the air. Let's continue Majora's video. But the basically just saying that uh, law enforcement and medevac are also coming Yo, out and uh, yeah no this just looks weird. yeah knowing this I did not have Joe Biden passing away by COVID. Joe, Joe Biden has said he had COVID today COVID on my bingo. oh shit I didn't know that Card. oh my god can you imagine him out right now trying to like freaking talk <laughs> But she Dude, how many times has that guy had COVID? You know it's like 16 or something. The freaking rot is going crazy. Five days ago? Thanks, Dane. It is going down. Whoa, folks, peep this. This is why. What up, Mr. Admitted Anus? So finally. Whoa, oh, man, folks. that's an old. What up, Mr. Look, Admitted this, Anus? This so is back in the day. I have done this. Cat I've Dad, done holy but shit. Basically. Uh, you guys ever seen that name before? I, I haven't seen it in this life. Man, I just want my old accounts back. I just want, I just want to, I just want to fucking jib, jib jab with everyone that I was jib jabbing with and freaking continue having fun. And they're ruining all my fun, dude. All of our fun. We're just trying to have fun. Major, did you do two videos about this or is it one? Whoa, folks, oh, yeah, this. Here's... This is wild. So Air Force Two is in the air, and there is an FAA flight restriction that just went up in Wilmington, Delaware, where Joe Biden lives. The flight restriction is for VIP movement. This coincides with presidential movement. So some people are thinking that Joe Biden is leaving this mortal coil right now. Wait, did I just watch this one, or did I watch the other one? Yeah. Fuck. So here's another little tweety tweet with some stuff here, uh, but I'll pause to let you guys read it. We just watched this one. What up, Mr. Admitted Wait, Anus? I thought that there Whoa. was two. Yeah, Joe Biden dropped out. Oh, we got support. Come on now, don't we? Ah! <coughs> nah, bro. I'm just gonna draw a big old pee pee on it. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna grab my ballot and I'm gonna draw a wang. Same. Yeah, Joe Biden dropped out. Oh. Same, bro. <laughs> was there two? Did I fuck this up? Hey, everybody. We have our Monday meeting tonight at 8 p.m room link below if you don't have the new password oh hell yeah dudes jump in there
<laughs> like, dude, this shit is cr like Peter Thiel has lost his mind. So I think in the case of Palantir specifically, I think when I was doing research online, a lot of the criticisms that people want to make about Palantir is the idea that the technology that Palantir produces um, is used to crack down on individual liberty. So often the examples that people use to make this criticism is the idea of um, the example of policing departments across the U US or even with the protests outside the contracts with the IDF. And how do you, in your position and as involved in Palantir, how do you navigate that balance um, between governments and technology? So I think in the case Ooh. of pa This dude is a goner, bro. All right. Let's see. Does anyone got any freaking The worst part about losing all your freaking accounts is losing all the people that you follow and starting over with these goddamn these trash ass fucking Dude, all the content on this app sucks so hard now. Timber. This is what he said on his Truth Social, and it reads, quote, My debate with crooked Joe Biden. All I can see is Chen. The history of the Dude, is it... So I want to talk to is everybody. Is it Chin racist? Did that, we just watch a conspiracy? That, is it Chin racist to be judging everyone based on their chin first now? We kind of live in a chin racism era, right? Sorry. Sorry. Theory. You gotta prove that you're not a chin racist. That's expected of everyone. It shouldn't be that difficult, you know? Come to life in front of millions of people last night at the RNC. Just track with me. This is gonna be a minute, but it's what worth it. Grab shit? a drink, sit down. Anyway, do we got any other... Anyone else talking about this shit? Laura Loomer was, right? So wait, is Trump actually picking J.D. Vance as his VP? Oh my god, dude. What a nightmare. This is all Peter Thiel. That's how we... Like, dude, the, the sniper thing, Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel's octopusy ass signed off on that. Like, this is all Peter Thiel plays. I can see it from a billion miles away, bro. Like, they're trying to make Trump seem like a superhero, so they did a classic wrestling move. Where when you're laying on the ground, and no one's looking, you fucking slash your ear. There's 0% chance Trump's ear was shot with a bullet. Get the fuck out of here. Jesus. So funny, bro. What is this? Netanyahu's arrival in the U.S. today with a non-existent welcome from Kamala Harris. Where is she? Dude, are they kissing? Are they touching swords? This is... They're like doing clone power-ups. Give me some of Daddy Goring's power. He just spits a shadow out of his mouth and Biden swallows it. <laughs> Dude, these freaks. How can no one else see that these are a bunch of Nazis? <laughs> Look at them. It's pretty obvious if you ask me. Wait, so was this literally... Wait, is this... Is this Brandon? Netanyahu... Joe Biden has COVID and he's fucking hanging out with baby Netanyahu? I love it. That's great, honestly. Hell yeah. Oh, he made a statement finally? I'm suffering from brain worms. Oh. Or that I have applesauce for brains. Well, <laughs> my fellow Americans, 
I want to take a moment to address some of the hateful shit you've been talking about me. <laughs> Many of you have said I am suffering from brain worms or that I have applesauce for brains. Well, <laughs> I won't miss words, so here it is. Fuck you. You're all a bunch of faggots. End of quote. Repeat the line. So enjoy President Cackles or Not President Bo Biden. President Biden, that kind of language is truly reprehensible. You are a bigot. I've known it all along. Uh, ever since the horse porn scandal that, you know, you... You made Anita Hill fucking like horse porn or get over the horse porn or whatever. You're a fruitcake, dude. And we've seen the pictures of you in Mexico. We know what you're doing there. Little, little kids, you freakazoid. Uh... Oh, say, okay. So anyway, there is a theory that I'm loving, bro called Biden did not sign his resignation letter. I love this theory. I freaking think it's amazing. It sounds to me exactly like some dumb paperwork shit that they would do if they're weekend at Bernie Bernie Zing freaking Biden right now, okay? So first off, the first bit of weirdo fuckery, right? Head of Secret Service was asked to resign this afternoon. Which fits in with fuckery if Chancellor Joe is going to heaven today. <laughs> okay, so Kimberly... D Director Cheadle, this is... Okay, so yeah, the director of the Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle, was asked to fucking resign. On July 13th, 2024, the United States Secret Service, under your leadership, failed to protect former President Donald Trump. I mean, uh, it looks to me like uh, he, he made it just by the skin of his ear. What do you mean? That seems successful to me. Uh, failed to protect former President Donald Trump from an assassination attempt that took the life of Corey Comparatore. And seriously injured at least two other people. Oh, is that the R.I.P. Corey that was happening the other day? When I thought that it was an ominous warning to me? <laughs> Today, you failed to provide answers to basic questions regarding the stunning operational failure. Like, dude, this is theater. It's all theater. Everything is theater. The, whatever, this was agreed upon before. Like everything, dude. This... The shit doesn't just happen. This is all designed. Uh, to reassure the American people that the Secret Service has learned its lessons. Yeah, because they've had a great spot record, great track record ever since JFK got his fucking head blown off. The Secret Service has been very trustworthy ever since. <laughs> Stupid asses. Uh has learned its lesson and begun to correct its systemic blunders and failures in the middle of a presidential election. The committee and the American people demand serious institutional accountability and transparency that you are not providing. We call on you to resign as director as a first step to allowing new leadership to swiftly address this crisis and rebuild the trust of a truly concerned Congress and the American people. Yeah, and, uh, and let me guess, the person that they bring in is going to have direct, direct, easily traceable connections to fucking Nazis. Let me guess. Not, not that there needs to be any more. How, how many more Nazis can you get in the American government? It's already filled to the brim. James Comer is still the is still around, and Jamie Raskin, Jamie Raskin. Okay, so here we go. This is the real shit. Ready, boys? So remember remember Biden's little cute letter where he's like, We did it. We did it, Jax. We did it all. We did everything. We did the student loans, and then we bailed on it. We, uh, we didn't do anything to stop the abortion rights disappearing. Uh, we actually have just made it f more far-right extremist. As we possibly can, honestly. That's our goal, because, you know, I'm a Nazi. My name's Joe Biden. My dad was Joseph da or George Dash. That's how it works. We are Nazis. We pretend to be not Nazis, but really, secretly, we are. And if, if you guys could pay attention to the things we do and not listen to the words we say, you, too, would notice that we are Nazis, in fact. But 
Y'all are dumb as fuck, so you never notice. Anyway, <laughs> did Biden even sign his own resignation letter? Bizarre new theory sweeps internet, complete with photographic evidence. And boys, you know when someone is saying on the news, bizarre new theory, blah, 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 that whatever this is saying is true. <laughs> so the, the news is just opposite day, always. Whatever it's saying, you just... Flip it, and that's the truth, usually, okay? My fellow Americans... I'm not going to read this shit. We just care about the signature. Okay, so that's the signature, right? Weird. A wild conspiracy theory has started swirling on social media over claims that President Brandon Dash did not sign his resignation letter. The 81-year-old released... Annou 81-year-old released announced... He was standing down. Wait, the 81-year-old released announced. That's a typo, right? I love fucking, dude, the media. I love the media in 2024. It's amazing, man. From his presidential race by sharing a letter to his social media on Sunday afternoon. Speculation has since started to grow with conspiracy theorists pouring over its authenticity. With some believing he never actually signed the letter himself. His signature on the letter shared on Sunday show his name being underlined, which, according to some commenters, he has never done before. Billionaire Bill Ackman has been one of the those sharing the theory online, frequently reposting different takes on his signature to his ex-profile. <laughs> okay, so this is the signature that was on there, right? They're saying, oh, it's weird with the with the underline. Ackman, 58, who is also a psycho, lunatic, nutbag. Bill Ackman, idiot. I hate him, but doesn't matter. We lo we go to wherever the tea is coming from, right? We drink from the <laughs> from the teat of the tea. Don't care where where the source is. Ackman58 shared one post that said, LMAO, there's no way Biden didn't even sign the letter, alongside an image of various <laughs> different versions of his signature. Another, While another person posted, yikes, look at the B, totally different between the latest version and the previous one. The junior is also left off the most recent signature. Wikipedia has an odd practice of including signatures. Their copy also does not match the letter. Uh, Wikipedia's... It's not an odd practice. I love that they do that, where they collect all the different signatures. So now the question is not just who wrote the letter, but who signed it. This really does look like a coup. <laughs> Another commentator said, now this is a conspiracy I can get behind. Biden is dead or some shit. While others have said that without any physical proof of him signing the letter, either on video or picture, they will never believe he signed it. One person posted, no presidential seal, bad signature, and no video. I'm calling bullshit until I see video of Biden. The president has been isolating with COVID-19 at, at his holiday home in Rehoboam fucking beach. Delaware when his team composed the letter. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds like he's dead. <laughs> and this is the tweet that this Bill Ackman weirdo posted. Okay, so let's look. I mean, let's. Is there a time that Biden has underlined his name? Dude, he he does put the junior right. Bill Ackman's crazy, but I, I, on this, you know, maybe not. Something is going on with this, right? Have we seen him since he announced? No, right? Dude, this is some fucking Russia shit right now. This is literally some fucking USSR. Or who, who's the Russian, the Russian person that they hid was dead for weeks? Like, this is straight-up Russia bullshit, man. Which is just Nazi bullshit, because Russia has been 100% infiltrated by Nazis, too. It's so crazy, man. I can't believe we figured all this out. We're so smart, guys. 
Yikes, look at that B, totally different between the latest version and the previous ones. The junior is also left off the most recent signature. Wikipedia, oh, we read that. So now the question is who wrote the letter but who signed it? This really does look like a coup. Speaking with CBS, his younger brother, Frank Biden, said that the president, the president's health was part of the decision to stand down. He told the outlet, I'm incredibly proud of my brother. Selfishly, I will have him back to enjoy whatever time we have left. That choice of phrase sparked speculation from Ackman and others that Biden has a secret illness he has not disclosed. His secret illness is that he's 97 years old. What the fuck are you talking about? Secret illness. He's ancient. That is his illness. His illness is his brain is literally made of applesauce. And worms. <laughs> what? <laughs> that choice of phrase sparked speculation uh, from Ackman and others that Biden has a secret illness he has not disclosed. A top Parkinson's disease specialist visited the White House multiple times this year. Dude, they should go talk to Peter Thiel, honestly. He seems like he might have a problem with that. Right? <laughs> or something. Something's going on. He is a genuine hero. Cult country over self yeah right it sounds corny in our cynical political environment but he nor i are cynical no we're just nazis and our daddy came here on a u-boat and we've been hiding that from you so that we can become oligarchs of america and our family can do slavery again the goal remains the same defeat trump and continue the work that joe has done my hope is that our parties. Party rallies around this heroic act. Blech. When asked by the outlet if his brother's overall health played a role in him standing down for re-election, he said, In my humble opinion, absolutely. On Saturday evening, Biden summoned to his side two men who have been there since his political start. Advisors Steve Ricchetti and Mike Donilon. We are gonna we gotta look into those motherfuckers, right? Steve Ricchetti... Steve, how do you spell it? Richetti. Dude, I love our Miro board so much, right? This is the greatest thing in history. Mike Donilon. That is a fake name. Dude, that is, a, there is the fakest name I've ever seen. Steve Ricchetti and Mike Donilon. Shut the fuck up. No way, dude. Those are fake ass names. Uh, it was Ricchetti and Donilon who brought. Oh, dude, Donilon is like Y Sopel. Have you ever seen Donilon? Who brought them devis with them devastating new data? which would help to make up Biden's mind. They revealed the latest internal campaign polling taken since the debate, which showed he could no longer beat Trump. Biden's decision was made soon after, and he asked Ricchetti and Donilon to start drafting a letter and to begin the process of how to make a public statement. DailyMail.com confirmed the president also began telling his family. After his announcement, Kamala Harris announced she was running for the Democratic presidential nomination. A number of prominent Democrats have since came out in support of Harris, including California Governor Gavin Newsom. And dude, Dante and Nicole are have, I love them so much because they're so hopeful, guys. But they're they're so cute with this. They said that they said, don't worry, guys. Kamala is going to save the day. I said, you guys are fucking cute. But I don't think that that's true. I think that she's a Nancy. Here. I've been trying to tell you guys everything that John Mayer ever said is, is somehow true. true. And Kamala's going to be the president. He told after me that John May John H. Mayer told Nicole that Kamala Harris was gonna be president like a year ago. <laughs> it's already he, Yeah, Nicole has all the cheat codes. Like she she's known this for six months or something. Like it it's gonna it's all it's all working out, guys. Don't panic. Kamala is literally going to execute Order 66 <laughs> metaphorically 
on all of the Nazis. They're that all going so awesome. to prison That's and we're I never going to hear from them again. She's mask <laughs> off. She's been deep under cover. I, I only this want to cop against Peter Thiel. Yeah, I, I want a cop, guys. I love um, yeah. ACAB <laughs> except Kamala. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, dude, I'm pretty sure, according to Jesse Setabor, Kamala be drinking that baby blood, dude. Where is this? Jess, here, wait, Setabor. Frick, what is it called? It's the... The... Che Botar. Che Botar. Here we go. Fuck you. Yeah. Stand by one second. Okay, this is from the affidavit of Jessie Marie Shetabor. Now, she made some interesting claims about uh, this kooky little world we live in. Mainly that uh, the whole thing runs on weirdo, satanic, ritualistic cults that abuse children throughout the entire United States. She knows this because her family is part of this. And she said... <laughs> I testify that it is my full belief that the following individuals named or organizations being used are members of the Brotherhood system and part of child trafficking in the Oregon County or California, Washington, Canada, and UK areas. We know a lot of these are hard yeses. And then you get down here. Kamala Harris, John Kerry, William Barr. Michael Flynn, Hillary and Billary, Bill and Melinda. She says, without a doubt, these people, look, Masonic Lodges. It's that Magnolia School up there is literally like a place where they auction kids, apparently. And I've heard many fucking accounts of that. So it's not just Jesse. Jesse here seems very fucking. She's very, uh. What's it called? Uh, uh. Like, I think she's trustworthy. The shit that she sh she says checks out, bro. Um, and yeah, she's like, yeah, this is all a bunch of, like, basically, like, P-word people descended from these, like, Scottish Masons that are all doing secret society, Luciferian Brotherhood. Oh, we gotta sacrifice children so we can live forever. That kind of BS. Um, and dude... Like, if you haven't read this, you freaking should. It, it's, I mean, it really helped. Like, the hardest thing about this, I think, is putting your head in the space that they're in. Because I didn't want to believe that this shit is possible, dude. That this shit could happen today. Boy, it does. You know? So, yeah, it's just a bunch of weirdos. It's like the these Luciferian brotherhoods for some reason, swore to, like, give the Rothschilds and the Vatican uh, children end endlessly forever, and they call themselves the wolves, and they watch. They, like, stand out on the corner while they let the frickin' Rothies or the P-words go and diddle, you know, whatever, and they're literally spot, spot like, lookouts. They, like, look around, make sure that no cops come or whatever. That's their job. Their job is to protect, they call themselves the wolves, dude. It's fucking weird. So, anyway, Kamala Harris, I am not as hopeful as Dante and Nicole. She is another Nancy. We will never, ever, ever get a non-Nancy option. Every election has been a Nancy or a Nancy, bro, and we didn't know that. Like... I mean, we did. We've been saying this forever, you know? It's like, oh, they're all on the same team. Bro, for real. 
like directly on the same team all Nazis pretending to be anything but a Nazi because they know being a Nazi is wrong. Isn't that funny? It's not funny that they're they're doing bad shit, like heinous shit, right? And they know to hide it because they know that they, uh, if publicly people found out what they're doing, they would say they're disgusting monsters, but they don't care. They just say, oh, we're just going to do it secretly then. We're disgusting monsters, but we're, we're deceptive, disgusting monsters. Like, that's fuck gross, dude. <sighs> so. Anyway. <laughs> I think that's all I got on freaking Joe right now, but dude, something's, something is afoot. I need to see a video of that guy. Show us, come on, show us him dancing. Come on, sh have him dance around the house like Weekend at Bernie's. Oh, come on, do a cool AI of him. Dude, the AI wouldn't know what to do if it was told to do an AI of Joe Biden. It would be like, which version of Joe? Oh my God. So then also guys if um we can we can come back to Biden if anyone's got any clips or anything but that's all I got on him right now but I wanted to also talk about this why does Paul keep identifying y'all and blocking you me Dante and Nicole have been tweeting at Paul for months dude I I truly don't even understand how Nicole found this but she's a genius she's she's like the SEO god you know if you say if you give her a uh, search term, she's going to find all of the greatest information about that search term. She's a marketing wizard. But, so, it made our freaking life, right, when Dante, me, and Nicole all got followed by Paul after harassing him for months. Fuck off, Malish. Bad, bad little guy. You're a bad guy. Gotcha, rat. Um, but, so yeah, Paul is identifying you guys somehow. I mean, I'm assuming it's because you're saying, like, you're saying, you're calling him Timothy or something, but then, like, and do that, like, dude, we should be, yeah, we should just keep acting amok. Like, we want, we want to be like Odd Future. Remember how Odd Future came in the world and they were like, just wrecking shit and like you know going crazy on freaking Fallon and like not playing by the rules that's us okay we are just here to cause mayhem in the digital space that's what we have to do yeah it's it is probably promise shit yeah it's something like that dude because they like okay so anytime I make a TikTok account like I for a while there there's obviously something that they're able to figure out my phone. I, I think that they are tracking, like, your phone, essentially. So, like, they identify a, a phone to a person, and then they can figure out all the accounts that that person has made. Um, and they, ha they must have it really easy because they spot you in a second, you know? Um I'm assuming, like, that's what it seems like. And so Gug got blocked, and then he made a burner, and Paul blocked that, too. So, otherwise, my suspicion is just that he, you know, they're they're looking at our fucking disco, or, like, my, you know, my follow list, or whatever, or my Twitch subs, and they're going through and fucking just blocking everyone in there but it doesn't matter like he hasn't blocked me which is funny like but yeah anyway so Gug said I think bro is brazen and doing it as a scare tactic I didn't say shit to him on Twitter only when I'm in the Twitch chat I tell him he can flip and help us a lot when in the chat I call him Timothy in chat oh you don't even fucking say anything to him in Twitter I didn't realize that Dude, that's weird. Like, bro, what if his... Yeah, so I made a burner yesterday to follow my buddy Paul on Twitter. There's nothing to indicate it was me. He blocked me again today on the new account. And someone said, Paul... Yeah, Gug said this. 
Paul's handler blocked us so Paul wouldn't go AWOL. Now, that, I believe, like, I like that. I hope that's what it is. Like, that would make sense. You know what I mean? Like, there's probably, it's Paul and someone else managing his account, probably. Maybe. But yeah, so they're probably blocking everyone who's like, <laughs> but it's so weird that you didn't even, like, you didn't even tweet at him. So how is he putting that together? I suspect that actually might be true that we are getting to him in some way, but I don't know. Maybe that's too hopeful. I hope so, man. That's what I've been thinking too. Like, I really do hope so. I can't imagine, dude, that these are like, these aren't like soulless people. Like, you know, I, I, from the start, you know, if you think about it, like Paul, Paul basically parked a van out front to have a little bomb in it as cover for the fucking three or four massive bombs inside of the building, right? So, Paul probably honestly doesn't even really feel like uh, he is the domestic terrorist, but he should. But also at the same time, you know, it's like he was, what, 20 at the time? And I'm sure they fed some bullshit about, you know, oh, this is... You know, how this is a good thing and like blah, 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 you know, and it takes you 10 years to realize that it's actually for some asshole like Larry Potts's fucking ego or whatever, you know, or some L Leeby war boy that's trying to make a name for themselves, you know. So, like, Paul doesn't have a fucking say in this, all this shit. Um, but he's also a fucking straight up adult now. And he knows it's wrong, and he should be saying, dude, I don't care, do whatever you want to me, I'm not doing that shit anymore. But dude, them blocking all of you for that kind of stuff, that would be exciting, right? That would be sick. They use the rhetoric that some innocent lives must be taken for the greater good, that's how they rationalize it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I bet that like, you know, I, I hope that Paul doesn't think, you know, Paul has realized now, like, younger people, like, especially when you're an impressionable, like, military recruit, you know, he was like, he joined the military at like 18 or whatever, you know, and, uh, you know, I think that it's easy to, it's easy to, like, talk young people into that kind of shit, because you don't know any better, you know, um, so yeah, I bet that, yeah, it's like, a, and I bet that they also did the thing where they're like, oh, you know, you're not, it's not even your bomb that's, like, doing most of the damage. Your bomb is just for cover, you know? Like, they probably did a whole bunch of shit to make him feel like, eh, it's not that big of a deal, you know? Like, but I have to imagine by now, like, seeing the way that they fucking did him and, like, I think they let him, like, rot in jail for, like, a year or two, um... Like, they don't give a fuck about you, Paul. And you gotta see that. You have to. Bro, they're gonna kill you and your kid one day. Like, this ends with y'all being wrapped up in a carpet. And fucking thrown over a bridge. Always. This is how it ends. Wow. Don't you just want to fucking live with your stupid wiener dick kid, Eddie Liger? And just, like, go fishing? Why do you have to kill us all? Why do you have to follow my friends? Why do you have to do domestic terror? Why can't we all... Like, you see that you guys are the problem, right, Paul? We don't do this shit. None of us. It's just you guys. It's just you Nancys. So. Nip Paul, why so, Paul? We gotta see them nips, Paulie. Come on. I wanna see... How come you have the big giant Dumbo ears. What's going on with Nicki Minaj's ears? Paul, do you know the answer to that? That's all I want to know from you, okay? But yeah, um, ultimately, Paul is an old man, and you know what they say about old dogs and new tricks, and he is the top dog. <laughs> top <laughs> FBI top dog. I agree. I wonder if Paul or his handler are just blocking anyone who was following the past week or so. I don't know. I, I don't use Twitter, but I'll make an account and see if I get blocked. Hell yeah, alien. Let us know. But, but you know, dude, if it's, if it's because 
the handler of Paul doesn't, you know, like, I think that it's like Scientology, right? They all tattle on each other. They all keep each other in line and check each other, essentially, to keep everyone in the cult. That's how it works, you know? I'm sure you get cute little, uh, you know, nice little things if you tattle on your fucking brothers and your Levy brothers and sisters and stuff, you know? And then I, um, I didn't get to, like, look into it too much, but I fucking felt like something like this was coming from a million miles away. Like, as soon as that, uh, Chris, that Mr. Beans' uh, friend Chris, who came out as trans, as soon as they did that, and, you know, I, we've been on Mr. Beans as a Nancy for a while, like, I knew there was a play here, and this feels like... Literally, they're using, like, I don't know. It's just crazy that I, I'm just so sick of the fucking trans people are all fucking groomers and bullshit, you know? And it's like Mr. Beast's trans friend being the, you know, a groomer. Dude, I'm just saying it feels a little bit like fucking... <laughs> Uh, Thomas Matthew Crooks, you know? It's a little too perfect timing. A little too... I don't know, but... Chris is all over TikTok now. Apparently actual grooming. It's perp. But but I'm just saying, like, they put... They probably knew th that Chris was like this before, you know? And then they put him on a pedestal or something. Or, or them, you know? Like, I don't know. It's just like... the most popular YouTuber and his friend Chris and then being like, I don't know. It just feels like, like I'm not saying that he, I'm not saying that they are not a groomer. I'm not saying that, right? I'm saying that it feels like they were put in the spotlight so that we could come to this conclusion eventually, you know? Like, <laughs> so we can be like, see? Trans people, groomers, like, I don't know. Yeah, they knew Chris was problematic and that he would feed nasty rhetoric. Yeah, right? That's what I mean. That from the start, they, like, if you were a real content creator and you heard any weird thing, like, this isn't something that happens overnight. This isn't like, oh, we, we just found, we just heard that Chris was texting with minor. Like, this is shit that you find out, like, over a long period of time. They all are hanging out all the time. There's no way they didn't know this. And then just like... Yeah. It just feels like... Yeah. I mean, it's just... This is what they do. They pick out people that they can fucking make... Stories out of, essentially. And then they... Let them do their thing, and then they make big stories about them for their narrative that they want to push. And their narrative that they want to push is that trans people are all fucking groomers because they need to make an a demon that isn't them because they're the ones literally drinking child blood daily. Peter Thiel, ask him, the reptile. Ask him about how many quarts of blood he drinks a day. You know what I mean? But I'm definitely not, yeah, I'm definitely not saying that Chris is not doing what, they, what they're accused of. But um, if there's anyone talking, I don't want to, there's a video that someone was, that uh, is talking about this, but they're like a total transphobe and I don't really want to play that shit. Um, but if there's anyone who does it, does a, a um, you know, a roundup or whatever respectfully, let me know. Because... Yeah, I don't know. It, it's This is just like, this is what it was for. It was to say, see, all trans people are fucking weird groomers. Mr. Beast's trans friend is like this. But Mr. Beast is a fucking Nazi, so this is premeditated. Mr. Beans probably is the one who fucking told, like, <laughs> was telling Chris to recruit kids. If I know anything about these Nancys. But Mr. Beast probably set up the meetings with minor. That's what I'm saying, right? Like, dude, that's what that's what that 
that's what that um that blind item was alluding to, right? They're saying that they're using influencers, and they said this influencer in particular, young boys from around the world will do anything for. Who the fuck else would that be? Mr. Beast is a recruiter for sure. He's probably the top recruiter. Like, Miranda Sings probably gets, like, one... She probably gets a, a fish on her hook once a fucking month at this point. Mr. Beans could do hundreds. Especially internationally is what the fucking blind item said. That these kids are, like, <laughs> signing up to go to a thing that they think is, like, a summer camp. <laughs> Uh, surprise, it's Peter Thiel's blood drinking camp. But yeah. It's just like, it's so fucking twisted, dude, that this is all always like premeditated and planned and like, oh, 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 you know, we're all, we're all diddlers. Uh, but let's, let's fucking single out. Chris and let's make let's make everyone hate trans people more because guys if we don't give them an enemy they're eventually going to realize that we are their enemy who has been drinking their children's blood for centuries <laughs> so anyway but okay that's all I have for now let's do uh let's just finish this video from yesterday and see and then uh we can go we can go wherever the hell y'all want to go just wanted them to hear it from you. And so what was your reaction to, to yeah. me telling you that? So thank you for, I mean, so many times you'll have these kind of things happen and you won't say anything, right? That's what most people do. They're like, I But it was like rows what the and frick? they all had numbers and t So it looked like this, like a scoreboard with the word Dallas over it and like zero and then like just like a scoreboard. And not even a scoreboard, like um, I don't even know how to explain it, but it was like rows and they all had numbers and top was Dallas. I don't know what that means. I'm going to ask them about it. It was clear, very clear. You know, like a flash. I was like kind of scared by it. And so I'm gonna ask him about that, see if that means anything. Keep it close. Just so, just so we're clear, I had uh, a session. We went to. Oh, yeah, Blair. I've been wanting to watch the this octopus conspiracy about Danny Casalero, too, and Skinwalker Ranch. Okay, fuck yeah. Best producer in the game. Thank you, buddy. Okay, do we got, uh, after this, our options are going to be Skinwalker Ranch something or the CIA murder that exposed MK Ultra. That That's a pretty good one, too, but, um, about Frank, what was his name? Frank Ol Frank Olson, I think. Oh, oh yeah, yeah the, the one right before that is the mystery of CIA Frank Olson. There's a documentary made by Errol Morris about it. But, dude, now looking back on it, I'm like, I know Errol Morris is a fucking fed because he wrote or he made a video saying that the Umbrella Man is bullshit and it's silly. So he's obviously a fed. So him doing that CIA doc, I wonder what he left out. That Netflix doc about Frank Olson. What was that one called? That was a good one. You just shared a video to not cat dad? Hell yeah, I'll, I'll look at that ogre. Focus 12, um, and I just wanted them to hear it from you. And so what was your reaction to, to yeah. me telling you that? So thank you for, I mean, so many times you'll have these kind of things happen and you won't say anything, right? That's what most people do. They're like, I don't want to sound stupid. But uh, then you say it and you're like, and it leads to something. So always say it. But in this case, today is a day where I'm actually thinking about Dallas and sports because the Dallas Mavericks are playing in the NBA Finals tonight. So I don't know when people will be watching this, but hopefully we win. And this was a premonition of a winning scoreboard. But regardless, I was thinking this morning that, you know, tonight I need to figure out a way to do all the things I need to do here, be completely immersed and focused, but also try to watch some of the Maverick games. So the Dallas Mavericks are playing in the NBA Finals tonight. It's a big game, it's an elimination game. It's on my mind, normally it wouldn't be. So somehow you journeyed through at least a, a part of my, my mental bubble and picked up that part because that is that was definitely on my on my mind. Well, thank you for confirming that on camera. <laughs> I do appreciate it, they're not gonna think I'm crazy now. I am Jordan Crowder and I guess technically what I do is I own a marketing agency and then when I'm not doing that, I am exploring all the weird and wonderful parts of the universe. Have you ever had an out of body experience? Yes. So uh, inadvertently, spontaneously, during an NDE, um, yeah, I, I would, 
was kind of forced out of my body. Um, I'm guessing at this point through trauma and so much pain that the body was in, the consciousness just kind of says, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and step out. <laughs> Y'all have fun down there. And I sort of watched it. it. It seemed like almost like a security camera, like in the corner, like that was like my field of, of vision of the whole thing. It actually, I, I left my body when I was in my bed at home and then my wife took me to the hospital. And um, so I saw myself in the bed, but I, I wasn't registering what was going on. And when I was in the car being driven to the hospital, I described it in this book that I wrote, like it felt like my consciousness was like flapping behind me, like like a cape in the wind. Like it, it felt like it was outside the car. It all kind of hit me like after the fact. And I yeah, just yeah. Back and this guy is, the, all these dudes went to Monroe Institute. This is alive and kicking and uh, Area 52. But I I knew him before as a fucking magician who did puzzle, <laughs> puzzle videos on YouTube. Uh... But yeah, they all got to go to Monroe Institute, I'm assuming, because they are feds. Um, whereas real people like me and Ethan will never, ever get to go to frickin' Monroe Institute because we're broke and we're not fucking feds. And just feds, I guess, get to get spiritual. <laughs> when I was in the hospital, I continued that third-person perspective. And it just sort of... it. It never really changed that perspective until finally when they got my body stabilized and then I kind of came back in more or less and then everything went back to this normal, you know, VR headset kind of a point of view here. At the beginning I felt um, very scared and alone and then there was this moment, there was this time, we have a picture of it, where my wife took a picture of us together in the hospital room and there's this orb, there's this light and we tried to figure out what the light's from but it's like shining in really bright from, from over here but there's no lights over there and none of the shadows on us or anything it doesn't make any sense and it was around that time when she took that picture that i had this crystal clear understanding i'm sitting there in icu they're telling me that i might die and i was like from that point on i was so calm and i was like everything's cool i'm gonna walk out of here tomorrow we're gonna get on to the second part of our life and we're gonna look back on this one day and laugh and um and i remember i even i, I summoned the main doctor because all the nurses are basically like dude we don't know if you're gonna make it out of here and i was like let me talk to your boss and essentially I, I was able to like schmooze the doctor and I was like so it's time for me to go home and they're like you're not going home like your vitals like holy sh you know like, you know but I was like I was like it's okay I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna heal and we're gonna be fine but there was some sort of a an instant knowing at a certain point in the experience I had no idea how I was going to do all these things dude ogre yeah they're all they're all p words they're all made to be p words I think for sure yeah, Mr. Beans be a big old P word. And they have to be because they're grooming them into monsters, right? They're grooming, like, Peter Thiel. He's going to take over for Peter Thiel eventually, for sure. He's going to be president. That's their plan for Mr. Beans. Mr. Beast, he's going to be the fucking Antichrist. Yeah. That's their plan for him. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't that psycho? But yeah, they're all they're all p words, bro. They all make them be, I guess. I don't know. I don't fucking get it, man. But I I didn't have any fear. It, but it's for control. It's to control them. Here during the time that you were out of body, and you're experiencing this, and you're watching the car, you're watching yourself in the room. Is there ever a moment where you're telling yourself, "I'm dead," or is that is that even? Are you just confused? Are you just a, a passenger watching yeah. this? Like, what's that like? You have. Your, your human body and your consciousness. And your consciousness has to insert into your human body to live this, this physical reality here. And um, your human body is a, a conscious sentient being of its own, right? It's autonomous. And that's why you can take the consciousness out. That's why, and it can still perform like a robot. You know, you have your subconscious programming. But your consciousness um, is running the show. But when your consciousness isn't there, your body's still thinking and you're still connected at all times. It's like roommates sharing a space. My body was scared, you know, when my consciousness mm -hmm. wasn't in it. You're scared, you're, you're freaked out, and your anxiety's crazy high, you know. My, my pulse rate, d despite all the drugs and, and sedatives they gave me, the lady pumped me up, said she'd never given a human as many sedatives as she gave me, and they couldn't get my heart rate dropped uh, below 150. But your consciousness mm -hmm. is tapped into a higher level of information. And for whatever reason, it, I guess, knew that wasn't the end. I hope you guys enjoy those conversations. Uh, and how cool was that thing with Jordan with the sort of Dallas vision? I didn't know he was a fan of basketball. Scoreboard thing, I had no idea the Mavericks are in the playoffs. I don't watch basketball, I don't follow it. So he was quite surprised to hear me say it. I was pretty reluctant to bring it up and it did make sense. So that is pretty cool. That being said, this session, ladies and gentlemen, is about leaving the body. We're going to be guided through a meditation by Robert Monroe's voice to hopefully leave the body. Just briefly and then come back in. I mean, I'll let you know how it goes. Bro, 
today I had probably my one of my better my one of my best freaking gateway experiences, dog. It was awesome, and I'm telling you guys, the breathing is the ticket. So, I've been, you know, I've been, I've told you, I guys, I, you guys, I've been doing the uh, like ten minutes of br the breathing routine before the gateway tapes, and then I get my all my shit set up that I need right here, so I don't have to go fish around for it after. You know, if, I, if I'm going to go rip it and, you know, go to Space Town, I got that here. Got my water, got my headphones, got my eye thing. And I sit here at the computer and I go do my deep breaths, right? And you do it for, it's like 10, 10 minutes. And you just go. And it just goes faster and faster. You do like two minutes of breathing and then you do a minute and a half of uh, holding your breath. And dudes. The holding your breath is the ticket, I think. Like, so you do like two rounds or two minutes of deep ass breathing, right? And then it, on the last one, it goes, okay, breathe all the way in and hold it. And you hold that for like 20 seconds or something. And then he tells you to breathe it out and you let everything go out of your lungs. And you just have to kind of, if you guys haven't never done like breath holding training before, it's so, it's weird at first because you're basically just fighting the, the, you know, your subconscious reaction that wants to breathe. You always are breathing, you know, you don't have to think about it, but once you stop, once you like stop breathing, it feels really weird. But for the most part, you can last, you can breathe or you you have oxygen in your blood that lasts a lot longer than you think you know so you're basically just it's mind over matter essentially i used to do this all the time when i was a kid because i always wanted to learn how to hold my breath super long right so uh i got pretty good at it. i could hold my breath for like three minutes four minutes and stuff when i was you know in high school middle school like not that not that good you know but just like decent you know someone who's practiced but um and then dude i the Wim Hof thing, I didn't, uh, I didn't do like the full cycle, but I real, I found, you know, just through intuition that like, if you fucking suck tons of air, like for a minute before you hold your breath, that you can do it for a lot longer. Um, but so basically, you know, it's just, you're just basically fighting that urge to want to breathe. But once you get decent at it, you know, in this breathing exercise, you hold your breath for three three sessions of a minute and a half each um and the first few times that you do it you're gonna be like you know your chest like spasms sometimes but i i'm i uh like the like i think you can really hold your breath for a long time if you practice it enough you know but dude so anyway you do like the two minutes and then suck in a whole bunch of air, hold it for 30 seconds and then breathe it all out and then hold it for a minute and 30 seconds. And dudes, like at the minute and 10 seconds on each one, it's like uh, I f feel that like staticky, no like that loud static that everyone talks about. And, uh, you know, you're like, it's like you're kind of like, I feel like you're about, you know, feels like you're a little bit about to pass out. It's kind of a cool feeling. Um, but yeah, dude, like just holding, like, uh, like powering up, holding my breath, uh, and doing like three ses sessions of that, bro, it felt like on the third one, like I was about to splash out of my body and then it didn't happen. But if you guys have any tips on how to freaking get in there. Like, dude, it kind of feels like you're about to coom a little bit. <laughs> but then I was like, what the fuck? And Because it went away. I think because I got excited. <laughs> it was awesome. But, yeah, dude, the breath holding, I think, is what... The breath holding and, like, the breath... The powering up is, like, the frickin'... That's what I need. What up, Biz? Peter taught his boyfriend how to hold his breath forever. <laughs> but yeah, dudes. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, David Dobrik too. Yeah, dude, it's all of them. 
It's everyone. Trump rally shooter update. Who's this? This is absolutely crazy. This is absolutely wild. Every time we get new pieces of information as to what took place on July 13th at Trump's rally, it continues to conflict with previous information. We have to get directly into this one because Thomas Matthew Crooks High School is coming out and saying everything you heard about Thomas Matthew Crooks happens to be completely f Dude, bullied my dick. Bullies don't do, or bullied kids don't do this shit. Bullies do this shit. False. What the fuck did we say? We called this. Let's go. False. Everything you heard from news, media, investigators, and all these different interviews does not line up what we know about Thomas Matthew Crooks. Is it possible that Bethel Park High School happens to be lying to us? It's always possible. I do not know Bethel Park High School, but I do know news, media, and the powers that be have lied to us many times in the past. When investigators were looking into Thomas Matthew Crooks' background, investigators found that there were no red flags. Everybody that spoke on Thomas Matthew Crook's behalf said he was a nice guy, he was a loner, he stayed to himself, and he exhibited no red flags. It was hard to build an MO against Thomas Matthew Crooks. But as time progressed and things were looking more and more off about this whole situation, a story was being put together. People saw Thomas Matthew Crooks as a potential school pow pow person. There was these weird scripted interviews coming out that put Thomas Matthew Crooks in a bad light. News and media were interviewing students from his high school yeah. and they seemed to remember every little detail about Thomas Matthew Crooks. Dude. Now all these red flags were coming out of nowhere. But what was most important was the fact that Thomas Matthew Crooks happened to be on the rifle team to make it seem like he had experience, knowledge on how to handle a rifle, that nope. he was interested in guns. For instance, read this article right here. Thomas Crooks was real evil, but a good shot according to shooting range classmate. Now that's going to be really important later on in the story. Well, Bethel Park High School came out and said, this is not the Thomas Crooks that we knew. News came out on July 20th, and I'm reading this article from Yahoo News. Trump shooter Crooks wasn't on rifle team or bullied, according to the school. Bethel Park High School officials have contradicted reports that Trump shooter Thomas Matthew Crooks was bullied, threatening, and a member of the school's rifle team. So if we are going to take Bethel Park High School for face value, then as I had said in previous videos, someone is building a story against Thomas Matthew Crooks as they go along. Duh. This is a build a bear narrative. Now, I don't see why Bethel Park High School would lie unless they're trying to protect their school's image and their rifle team's image. They really do not have a reason to lie when it comes to this story. Has anybody pointed out the fact that Thomas Matthew Crooks happens to be 20 years old? He graduated high school about two or three years. Yeah, also, has anyone noted how Thomas Matthew Crooks looks basically like a burnt-out Elon Musk? Huh? Has anyone noticed that? Just us? Years ago, why are they not interviewing anybody from his place of work? He worked at a nursing home. I would think that would be more relevant information than where he went to high school. News, media, and investigators only interviewed his place of work. Uh, most likely because that story... the. The stories those people tell are not fitting the narrative. This dude must be a son of a fed, right? He's got to be. Who's this fed kid? This is the kid who's like, yeah, he was a bully. He was a, or, or no, he was super bullied. He, everyone picked on him. One time. It's either you were a bully and picked on him or you're a fed kid. Come to find. I think you're a fed kid. You look kind of like a fed kid who would who would take your first assignment from Papa, and you'd say, Daddy, please let me lie on national television for the CIA. Please, Papa. And out, his employer stated that Thomas Matthew Crooks exhibited no red flags. He was a very good employee. So what Thomas Crooks' employer is stating kind of matches what Bethel Park High School is coming out and saying. Can we interview anybody that was not from Thomas Matthew Crooks High School or his middle school? Can we interview anyone that worked with Thomas Matthew Crooks? How does anybody look at this story and say everything we're being told from news and media looks fine? Anything outside the narrative is a crazy conspiracy theory. Now, getting back to this article in updated statements posted Saturday, officials said they have no record of Crooks ever trying out or being dismissed from the rifle team due to character <laughs> or performance concerns as previously reported. The school says it's possible that Crooks informally attended a practice such as sneaking in, took a shot and never returned 
The school said in its statement, however, the school added they do not have any record of that happening. There were also reports that Thomas Matthew Crooks made threats against Bethel Park High School, that he was a potential school pow pow person, but a statement also dispelled reports that Crooks made threats of violence against the school, describing Crooks as a quiet, bright young man who generally got along with his teachers and his classmates. And according to the school, there was no indication in his grades or behavior that he was being bullied. News and media aside, Bethel Park School District updated this information on Thomas Matthew Crooks on their own website. They put this statement. Yeah, dude, dude, what if Alive and Kicking is related to Steven Crowder? Like, dude, it wouldn't be surprising, right? Can we be surprised anymore? Are you guys capable of being surprised anymore? I, I think I lost that feeling. I don't know what it is. ...on their own website. The most recent updated statement was once again July 20th. Continuing to read from the statement, Bethel Park High School said, We will work closely with law enforcement investigators and share information as appropriate regarding school district policies, the active investigation, and law enforcement protocols. The school district stated, Otherwise, we would direct all media inquiries to those handling the investigation for more information. Then a couple days later... Bethel Park School District says, wait a minute, what news, media, and investigators are telling the public happens to be completely false, and we are going to correct the record. The school district's website says that Thomas Matthew Crooks had no involvement in the rifle team. There was- This rules, dude. There's no threats of violence coming from Thomas Crooks. That's a false claim and that there is a painful misconception that Thomas Crooks was relentlessly bullied in school, which may have led to this incident involving Trump's rally. This is once again not coming from Yahoo News, not coming from any other news source, but directly from Bethel Park School District. They say at the end of this article, Mr. Crooks was known as a quiet, bright young man who generally got along with his teachers and classmates. Since graduating in 2022, Mr. Crooks earned an associate's degree in engineering science from the community college of Allegheny County and worked as a dietary aide at Bethel Park Scale Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. So wait, hold up. He went to a community college. He has a associate's degree. Why are we not interviewing any of his teachers from his community college? Does anybody know him that took classes with him they can interview? Why are they always interviewing people from his high school? Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Can we please see a recent photo of Thomas Matthew Crooks? Yeah. The school district even says at the end of this article, it would be wildly irresponsible for us to speculate on his state of mind in the two years since we last saw Thomas Crooks. And they are correct. From everything we have known about Thomas Crooks, apparently he led a completely different life after leaving high school. He held down a job, which once again, his employers had nothing bad to say about him. He went to college and he got a two years associate's degree. So a high school should be a non-factor for Thomas Matthew Crooks at this point. Because Thomas Crooks did not have a political background, because his MO did not make any sense to this Trump event, they have to build up this MO. Again, it's a Build-A-Bear. Now <laughs> news and media are dropping articles that Thomas Matthew Crooks researched school pow pow Ethan Crumbly, his family, before the attack. Those interviews where news and media were interviewing students who had attended Bethel Park High School, it was clear as day those interviews were scripted. He was bullied almost every day. In what way can you explain? Um, who is this federal kid? Um, I mean, he would sit alone at lunch. He's a liar. He's lying. Look, I feel I can hear it. I mean, he was just an outcast, and you know how kids are nowadays, so they're going to see someone like that, and they're going to target him because they think What? It's funny or whatever, so it's the best way I can describe it. And it's Because only... it's also not true. Dude, he got the ears, dog. He got that fucking chin. He got the teeth. Is he kind of sad? Like, I don't want to say this is what provoked it, but you never know. Yeah. Bro. Have you ever seen that kid in real life? Have you ever been to that school? What are you talking about? You said he was a loner? Yeah. Um, I want to say he was a loner more because he was just... He was quiet, but like he was just bullied. Like he was bullied so much. So much. What? Dude, this guy's a fed. This is a fed kid. Look at high school. Yeah. What Look at him keep looking down in shame because he's a fucking liar. Do you remember at all what they said to him or called him? No. Um, he was just made fun of, I guess, for the way he dressed or his appearance. The school district stating that Thomas Matthew Crooks was a brilliant student, he was an outgoing student showing no signs of bullying, does match with other reports where they are saying Trump rally shoot.
Dude, this guy is great. <laughs> Tudor was a math whiz at school, had won a $500 prize. Thomas Crooks graduated in 2022 from Bethel Park High School. According to the Pittsburgh Tribune Review, he received a $500 star award from the National Math and Science Initiative, according to a newspaper. So this is wild. You now have the school Bethel Park. Yeah, I love how he can't re recall anything specific. Bro, I need to interview that kid. Yo, kid, come on, tell me who your FBI dad is. You have to tell us, you fucking little faker. You little actor. You're going to be in real world in, a, in two seasons, guaranteed. Park School pushing back and speaking up for Thomas Matthew Crook's character. Bethel Park High School stood up and They gave him a little money and he told him he'd try his best. <laughs> said we are not going to allow you to make up this narrative the one thing that will always stand out to me the one thing that i cannot wrap my mind around is once again investigators police collected dna samples at the crime scene that day they got a hit back that hit being thomas matthew kevin rojack he's one of our fuckers that's the one that we've been wanting to look into right we got to look into that biatch because he is another paul I can feel it in my freaking bones, dudes. Him and uh, what's the what's John Pelletier, the the rat that's in Maui who covered up all the Las Vegas stuff? Like, dude, I'm so sick of this crap. This is nuts, bro. I'm sick of our government being the thing that is attacking us. <laughs> it's so bullshit, dude. We should not have to protect ourselves against the fucking government always. Kevin Rojack, the fucking... Yeah, look at this Nazi covering up fucking crimes for Nazis. Gross ass Pittsburgh. Suck me, FBI. And look, he got his own little fucking... His little uh, announcement letter, just like Paul got. <laughs> Look at this. It's just like Paul's, dude. He was in Pittsburgh. Here, let's let's give his resume a look. See, maybe you guys can figure out what what crimes he was doing in pittsburgh and shit because you you know they put these people in the places where they're gonna do their crimes so that they can cover for them he was a criminal cyber response and services branch joined the fbi in 2002 assigned to the norfolk field office investigating counterintelligence matters also served on the norfolk field intelligence group and the swat team as an operator and sniper 2010 he promoted he was promoted to supervisory special agent at the norfolk field office's cyber and global counterintelligence squad 2012 he was promoted to fbi headquarters in dc where he served in the cyber division's asia cyber operations unit in 2013, he returned to the Norfolk field office where he was assigned to the counterintelligence squad. 2014, he was promoted to cyber supervisor in the Cincinnati field office. <clears throat> he was responsible for Cincinnati's computer forensics program as well as the computer scientist program. He was promoted to assistant special agent in charge of the Cincinnati field office. Must have been a serial killer or something that he was covering up for, or, you know, serial boy, little boy recruiter. Promoted to serve as section chief in 2021 at the NSA U.S. Cyber Command. Yuck! In the FBI's cyber division, in that role, he served as the primary interlocutor, but interlo interlocutor between the N FBI, NSA, and USCC. Assisting in the execution of joint sequenced operations targeting our country's most sophisticated cyber adversaries. What are you talking about, dude? Name one thing that he's done. Mr. Rojek was promoted to Chief of Staff for the Cyber Criminal Cyber Response and Services Branch. 
Prior to joining the FBI, Mr. Rojek served 11 years as a commissioned officer in the U.S. Army, obtaining the rank of major. He served one tour in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom, immediately following the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. Mr. Rojek earned a bachelor's degree in political science from American University. So, anyway, he is, uh, yeah... He joined he joined and did a tour after Paul helped do 9/11. That's cute. That's super cute, dude. The crooks. But where did they get the DNA to compare the DNA at the crime scene? Yeah. Where did they Yeah, where would you get all this stuff? This is literally them going back and being like it was Lee Harvey Oswald two and a half minutes after the shooting. They said we got all of his information. He's from Russia. His name's Lee Harvey Oswald. He's they a get Thomas. He was a big fucking loser. It's Matthew Crook's DNA from. From what I understand, to match DNA on a criminal. And it takes weeks to do that, doesn't it? They would have to already be in the criminal system. From what we understand, Thomas Matthew Crooks had no previous criminal record, no previous criminal history. So he should have no DNA in the system to match with what was found on the roof. So we have to ask ourselves, if Thomas Matthew Crooks was not the man on the roof, as we have been shown in- Yeah, this theater, this theater show in particular is the sloppiest shit I've ever seen. You can't do this shit in 2024, dude. Everyone's got a camera. There's 50,000 fucking angles, bro. You stupid idiot feds. This is, this was your false flag? This was what you thought it would do? This is what you thought would do it? God, Paul, you're an idiot. You're so fucking dumb, Paul. Fuck. And pictures, folks. After all of this, me calling you out, making sure that you are on your A game, that you don't do... Oh, I've, we've been telling you not to slop it up on us. We don't want it sloppy. And this is what you do? This whole thing? Holy fuck. Photos and so forth. And and you delete Ethan? Ethan conspir autistic conspiracy Ethan? You delete his account instead of doing the preparation that you needed to do a false flag. Nope, you guys are sloppy and you're just going to ram it through and kill and... Delete everyone's account who's a problem. Y'all are shameless. Do a better coup. Do a better false flag. Paul Weisopel, FBI special agent. Worst special agent in charge. Caught on day one. Sloppiest bitch. Dude, I how long have we been saying it, guys? These are the sloppiest, most arrogant humans, right? Like... It's shameful that they get away with this shit because look at how sloppy they are. Look at this shit, dude. Rest stop one. Numero uno. <laughs> you can't. Like, this is so hilarious how stupid and bad these feds are at everything. Bro, we would truly be the greatest feds ever. There would be no criminals because we would have all of the business extremists in prison immediately. Super shitty work, right? Everything they do is shitty. Like, dude, Paul, watch the Americans. Dude, you came out here. This was your disguise? Fucking Jim Bob? You already look like a Jim Bob. Put, dude, put long hair. Just put a have a hat on that has long hair underneath it. Just so Dante doesn't recognize you, you big Sasquatch. Yo, Gug Gug, look. This is your second Sasquatch sighting. Big old gangly weirdo. Dude, seriously, look at just the way he's standing. I know it's him. Look at the. Uh, he's like always like this. He's like a fucking marionette. Look at him. Look at this. <laughs> this is so funny, dude. And, dude, that Boston booming shit is great. We're going to look at that sometime. 
That's another fucking subby sabo, right? You guys freaking nailed them. God damn it. Dude, hell yeah. We finally are feeding the beast of Miro, and it is getting upset. We gotta bring these down. We need this for comp comparing. Oh, it's Elon's kid. Look. <laughs> and see what they did? He was a sweet, nice boy who was good at math. And what did they say? They say, no, he's a freak. He's a fucking... He's bullied. He's stupid. He's weird. Look, dude. Uh, dude, that's so him. This big old dork. <laughs> what does he do? He's always got his arms around. He's like literally the Sasquatch, bro. Second encounter. <laughs> that one's ugly. Dude, I know. He like walks like Pinocchio with his arms like... <laughs> I love you, Paul, but you're a big goober. And look, dude, what's his face has to be a clone of Reinhardt Heydrich too, right? This guy, his twin brother, his evil twin brother, bro. What was his name? He's the dude in Florida. Dude, he's gotta be right. <laughs> Uh, the mirror board is. You've been stressing Paul out. He going silver on us, dude. Fuck. Alfred Jodel. Oh, dude, German General Oberst as the chief of operations of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. Bro, that's great. What was this jackass's name in Florida again? Oops. Dude. What the fuck is this guy's name again? Florida governor, right? Was he the governor? Rick Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick Scoot, more like. Dude, he's literally a skeleton. Oh my god. I think you might be fucking right, Blair. Let's go. Look at this bald ass bitch. Oh my god. Dude, we cannot lose. This guy is a corpse. I hate him. <clears throat> this Nazi corpse, bro. <laughs> Streamlined process. We know what we're doing here, boys. This isn't our fucking first rodeo.
Beautiful. Beautiful work. And the, the board marches on. The board never stops. We never stop. The board never stops. We can't lose. All we do is win, boys. Dude, this is incredible. We literally could do this all day and night. There's so many, bro. We fucking rock at this. Good job, Blair. Dude, it's so disgusting. Yeah, we gotta watch something about Carl Weinbacher. No, no, his name is Rick Scott. I just was calling him Scoot for... Here, we'll do this. <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, well, Blair just, I think, got another connection. We got Alfred Jodel of fucking Nancy and Rick Scott! Who is also a straight up Nancy. We know that, boys, don't we ever. Dude, this is the most shameful. Fuck Norman Finkelstein, man. Holy shit. That's sinister. Ah. <sighs> I can't believe, like, all of the last ten presidents have literally been Nazis, bro. It's crazy. Right? Yeah, the nose bridge and brow, right? Dude, The and this one is like, there. no one could ever tell me this is wrong. I'll never listen to it. This is so perfect. And disgusting. Like, right? Faja, Papa, you love me, Papa? Tell me you love me. Finger blasted. <laughs> oh, man. And then, then we pay our respects to the only good Nazi for two seconds, but he's still a scumbag. But he tried, man. He's a, he's the only Nazi who's ever tried to do anything about this bullshit, bro, that we know of. Maybe there's been others and they got killed or something. I don't know. I doubt it, though. They all kind of feel like pussies, right? All of them. This dude, not a pussy, though. Although he could have, uh, you know... I mean, honestly, he should have probably taking everyone out you know that's what that's what the homie should have done he should have gone john wick mode he's done plenty of killing you know too in his life so he should should be on him to freaking put the monsters down that he helped create i wish I wish he would have. I wish he would have gone done a little Dorner style, you know. Bro, yeah. And it looks like he's got just the the crease right here too, right? Kind of. Got the big old fuck. Look at them. Fucking ears, dog. Holy crap. What is up with these bozos and their ears? These dumbos, more like. Man, I wish my I wish I didn't have these tiny little things. These petites. I wish I had the fucking jumbos. <laughs> Weinbacher worked on Zyklon B. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's is there a doc on him? Let's find one. What is it again? Carl Weinbacher? Hold on, I'm going to send this to Dante and Nicole real quick. They like being updated on the Nazi. The Nazi bullshit. Bro, we have a lot of them marked. Like, they are marked. They are marked for death, dude.
fucking Nazis, bro. Carl Weinbacher, Merchants of Death. Today marks the 72nd anniversary of the executions of Bruno Tesch and Carl Weinbacher. I was able to find a few pictures of Bruno Tesch, but none from Carl Weinbacher. So we know this Bruno Tesch, this dude is not dead either. Let's put him on the frickin' board. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Sorry, guys, we're in, we're in the mode where we do re <laughs> we're we're doing we're adding shit to the Miro board on stream. Okay, Tesh. Wait, what was the first name? Bruno Tesh. Show us this. Frickin' Nancy. Yeah, German chemist and entrepreneur. Together with Gerhard Peters and Walter Heard, he invented the insecticide Zyklon B. He was the owner of Tesh and Stabenow, called Testa, a pest control company he co-founded in 1924 with Paul Stabenow in Hamburg. During the Holocaust, Tesh sold vast quantities of Zyklon B, utilizing his pesticides as a way to commit genocide. Over 1.1 million people were murdered by the Nazis using Zyklon B. Following the end of World War II, he was arrested by the British as a war criminal, tried and executed my dick and balls. Tesh and his deputy executive Carl Weinbacher were the only businessmen to be executed for their role in Nazi war crimes in Western Europe. Or were they? Or were they, guys? After passing his high school exams in 1910, Tesh studied mathematics and physics for a semester in 1910 at the University of Göttingen before studying chemistry at the University of Berlin. He received his doctorate in 1914 and volunteered for military service at the start of the First World War. After a war injury, Tesh was appointed by Fritz Haber to the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physical Chemistry and Electrochemistry to develop chemical weapons of war. After the war, he stayed there as Haber's personal assistant until March 1920. Tesh then took over the management of the Berlin branch of the German Society for Pest Control, Dejesh, GmbH. Tesh joined the Nazi party on the 1st of May, 1933. Albeit not as an active member he became a supporting member of the SS the same year, one, when Emil Sam, a former employee of Tesh who would become an important witness at his trial, was asked to give his opinion about him. He said Tesh was not motivated by ideology, but purely material gain, too. Dr. Tesh was solely a businessman, and... According to my opinion, he was a very unscrupulous businessman, a businessman who would be prepared to walk over dead bodies. That is my opinion. Yeah, dude, fuck these business extremists. That you don't get that is not a uh, excuse. Bro, we are going to bring a world of hurt down on these people when we finally frickin win. These rat monsters. Tesh, along with fellow chemists Judd Peters and Walter Heat, with the support of IG Farben, began research into the use of hydrogen cyanide as a fumigating agent. They developed a process in which the hydrogen cyanide could be manufactured and used in a solid form 3. The patient was assigned to Dejesh to a Gesellschaft for a Schoening Speckkampf von MBH German Limited Company for Pest Control, subsidiary of IG Farben. Uh, why does she read German so well? <laughs> That's weird. Subsidiary of IG Farben, with Walter Heat being the only one of the inventors to receive patent rights, a portion of the proceeds from the manufacture and sale. Peters joined Dejesh and became managing director during World War II. 
Dejesh was designated by the German government to set the safety rules and standards for the use of Zyklon B, and was given the authority to authorize shipments from the manufacturer to the customer after the strict criteria were met. Tesh and Stabano manufactured neither Zyklon B nor any other chemicals. It was primarily a pest control company specializing in fumigation of commercial properties such as the warehouses and freighters in the port of Hamburg. Zyklon B was produced by Deso Orca and Kalawick. Citation needed. In 1925, Tesh and Stabano, partly due to the largesse of Paul Haber of Dejesh, received the exclusive rights to distribute the insecticide Zyklon B east of the Elbe River. In 1927, Stabano departed from the firm. Tesh held a 45% share of the company and Dejesh held 55%. Tesh assumed sole ownership of the company in 1942-4. During World War II Tesh and Stabano sold massive quantities of Zyklon B to the S's. The gas was sent to Auschwitz concentration camp, such Senhausen concentration camp, Neuengam concentration camp, Grossrosen concentration camp, Magdalic concentration camp and Ravensbrück concentration camp. In these camps, the S's used the Zyklon B they had purchased to murder approximately 1.1 million people won. These fucking Nazis, dude. I'm so fucking done with these Nazis. An investigation into Tesh started after a former tested bookkeeper, Emil Sam, wrote to British military authorities, who were present in Hamburg since the city Rebel was in the British military government zone of Allied occupied Germany. Sam said that in 1942, he had come across one of Tesh's travel reports. In it, Tesh had recorded an interview with leading members of the Wehrmacht, during which he was told that the burial, after shooting, of Jews in increasing numbers was proving increasingly unhygienic, and that it was proposed to kill them with prussic acid. Allegedly, when Tesh was asked for his views, he had proposed to use the same method, involving the release of prussic acid gas in an enclosed space. As was to exterminate vermin, he had then trained the SS to use Zyklon B to kill human beings. Sam said he copied this report and showed it to a close friend, Wilhelm Buck. Buck advised Sam to destroy the letter immediately since keeping the letter posed a safety risk. Sam destroyed the letter he was fired for unknown reasons after the firm building suffered an air raid in July, 1943. 2. Tesh was detained in September 1945. British officers Walter Freud and Fred Pelican were assigned to the case. 5. The day after Tesh's arrest, Sam accompanied the British to the firm building only to find that registry had seemingly been destroyed in an air raid. It was later suspected that the registry had been intentionally destroyed too. During questioning, Tesh presented himself as a respectable businessman, and chemist he denied all suggestions and accusations that he had collaborated with the S's regarding the extermination of Jews. He said he... Dude, I'm sorry, I don't care. You don't get to ship more, more of your pesticide than you've ever shipped ever to a place... That you show up when you drop it off and you go, what the fuck is this like, wait, are you, is this a prison camp? You know, when you do that, you're knowingly, like, these fucking, this is like s such the Darvo thing, right? Oh, I was just being a little shrewd businessman. I just am a business boy. Sorry, business doesn't give you fucking excuse to be a genocider, genocider, you psycho. Never attended a conference discussing the subject, had not devised any methods for using Zyklon B other than fumigating the barracks, and had not known that the gas was being used to kill people. Tesh said he did not even Bro. know the gas was being sent to concentration camps. Five. Shut the fuck Tesh up. Tesh admitted to being a member of the Nazi party and a supporting member of the S's. He explained that he had been affiliated with the S's Hygiene Institute to obtain their business. Freud did not believe Tesh, but had no evidence beyond Sam's word. At the same time, Freud was facing pressure from high command to release Tesh, since British occupation forces were using Zyklon B to fumigate their ships. Against the wishes of Freud and Perkin, Tesh was released on the 1st of October, 1945-5. Isn't it so funny how these fucking demon Nazis always get such special treatment, right? Always.
both men immediately started lobbying their superiors to let them continue their investigation. Freud, who was also a chemist, was adamant that the investigation be allowed to continue. There's so much writing here. I know this is all bullshit, right? <laughs> That's how I know it's fucking ass trash. To continue, he was convinced that Tesh was a major war criminal. Dude, yeah, you're I've, Roundup's gotta have ties, right? Criminal. He and Pelican told High Command that Tesh's case was the first time they were dealing not with people directly concerned in the murder or ill treatment of prisoners or slave workers, but with those who lent their skill and services to facilitating the gruesome work of the concentration camps and so identified themselves with breaches of the laws of war on a wholesale scale. 5. High Command backed down. Tesh was rearrested on the 6th of October, 1945. Freud and Pelican started digging through other files and found that the firm had a sharp rise in profits in 1942 and 1943, when the mass gassings were at their peak. However, they could not find anything suggesting that Tesh, or his employees, knew their product was being used to kill people instead of vermin. Raids Bullshit. of the firm's employees turned up nothing five. Bullshit. Oh wait, let's do this. You go there. You go here, you go big. You turn on, beep boop. What's this ugly bitch's name again? Bruno Tesh? Yuck. During further questioning, Freud reported that Tesh adopted an attitude of ignorance carried to an absurdity. The questioning of Tesh's deputy executive, Carl Weinbacher, also failed to get any answers. Freud reported that Weinbacher was blindly obedient, has a slow brain, and was an arrogant man with limited intellect. Freud said Weinbacher was so insolent that special steps had to be taken by the interrogating officer. Five. The British administration were soon insisting that the firm needed to resume its fumigating. The firm's accountant, Alfred Zorn, was asked to substitute for Tesh he agreed, but said he needed written authorization from Tesh. Zorn. Freud and Pelican, becoming desperate, organized a meeting with hidden microphones, hoping that Tesh might incriminate himself. However, he and Zorn whispered to each other quietly enough that the microphones did not pick up anything five. After the meeting, Zorn was interrogated. Officials told him the room was booked, and bluffed that they had overheard everything. Zon panicked and admitted that the firm had sold Psychin B to concentration camps. He said he had records to prove the sales, huh. but claimed he did not know their purpose. While searching through the new documents, Freud came across some other documents discussing a training course delivered by Tesh to S's personnel at Sachsenhausen in January 1941. The names of several S's men were listed. All of them were low ranking five. All right, let's just go back to our frickin uh, I want to, I want to learn about Weinbacher. Fuck this guy. After the war, several employees of the companies that had supplied Zyke and beat to the S's in the concentration and extermination camps were brought before the court in a number of criminal trials. The first trial of employees of the Hamburg distributorship Tesh and Stapano, Testa, was held before a British military court in Hamburg from the 1st of March to 8, 1946. The owner of the firm, Bruno Tesh, and his co-workers Joachim Hans Drossen and Karl Weinbacher were charged with having wittingly supplied the Zyklin bust in the German concentration camps to murder citizens of the Allied countries. The defendant Joachim Hans Drossen was acquitted in the proceedings because he was given no insight into corporate policy. Weinbacher and Tesh, on the other hand, were found guilty of knowingly supplying Zyklin B to murder human beings, and were condemned to death. Zyklin 20 B dozen 1. Dr. Bruno Tesh and his business manager proxy, Procterist, Karl Weinbacher, who had never been members of the German government or the German armed forces were sentenced to death. The death sentence was carried out in the Hamlin, Hamlin, penitentiary on the 16th of May, 1946. My Bruno Emil Tesh, the 14th of August 18, 90 to the 16th of May, 1946, was a German chemist and entrepreneur. Together with Jad Peters and Walter Heat, 
He invented the insecticide Cyclin B, infamous for having been used by Nazi Germany to exterminate approximately a million of the victims of the Holocaust. He was the owner of Tesh and Stabano, called Testa, a pest control company he co-founded in 1924 with Paul Stabano in Hamburg, Germany, which was a major supplier of Cyclin B to the Nazi concentration camps. Following the end of World War II, he was arrested by the British as a war criminal, tried, and executed. Tesh studied mathematics and physics for one semester in 1910 at the University of Göttingen before studying chemistry at the University of Berlin, receiving his degree in 1914. He attained a position at Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. I feel like this is all just the fucking Wikipedia. Here we go. Fuck him. Fuck Tesh. Who's the... Albert Tesh was executed by hanging on May 16th, 1946 by Albert Pierpont in Hamlin Prison. My dick. Carl Wiebeter, the 23rd of June, 1898, in Stettin, the 16th of May, 1946 in Hamlin, was a German manager and war criminal who was executed after conviction by a British war tribunal. Wiebeter worked at Der Deutsche Gesellschaft for Schuldlingsbeckungsfonds which translates as German Corporation for Pest Control until 1924, and then at Tesh and Stapno, Testa for short, where he received the position of manager in 1927, and by 1943 was director and deputy executive under owner and chief executive officer Bruno Tesh. Testa manufactured and sold Zyklin B, which was used not only for pest control and disinfestation, but also in the Holocaust in the gas chambers of Auschwitz to murder people. Wienbacher was involved with the percentage of the sales proceeds of Zyklin B. Wienbacher often acted as the CEO whenever Tesh was absent or on business travels. This sometimes could be as much as 200 days a year in that time Wienbacher Jeez. would have full authority on all business activities. After the end of World War II, Wienbacher, Tesh and Joachim Drossen, the firm's first gassing technician, were arrested on the 3rd of September 1945. They were tried by a British military tribunal in the Curiehofs trial in Hamburg from the 1st of March to 8, 1946, also called the Testa trial or the Zyklin B trial. In the cases of Wienbacher and Tesh, the court ruled that it had been proven that both knew the purpose of cycling B. Tesh and Wienbacher were convicted and sentenced to death on the 8th of March 1946, while Drossen was acquitted. Tesh and Wienbacher were hanged in the prison for war criminals in Hamelin on the 16th of May 1946. Dude, there's such a weird lack of information about this guy. Just because guy. these men weren't part of the army or any government did not absolve them from any guilt. And best they were complacent, and worse they were actually worse than the anyone in the army, because the SS or Wehrmacht could always say they were following orders, whereas these men solely did it for profit. Yeah, dude. And, uh, where the fuck is Carl Weinbacher from? Why? I don't get, I don't get it. What the hell? Why is he like this? Where the fuck is he from? Why is he a Nazi? Why are the Nazis working with a not Aryan? Carl Hermann Frank? No. Carl Plague, the German soldier who saved the Jews. Dude, there's like nothing about this guy, right? Sadistic Nazi doctor. This dude's probably so. Who's this? Who's this, guys? Everyone deserves the fastest, most reliable internet speeds, regardless of where they live. With Carl Gebhardt. Dude, who the fuck is this? This is someone. It's gotta be. A, a sadistic, brutal doctor in Germany? This dude's kid is someone. He's got a striking face. It does look familiar. I am going to screenshot him.
the fuck was it again? Carl Gebhard. Carl Gebhard. Any interesting face Nancy's, you know, you got to bring them into the Miro. Like, dude, right? He kind of looks like a bunch of actors, I feel like. Robin Williams? Yeah, maybe. Although, Robin Williams was taken out, so was he a Nancy? I hope not. All these, dude, all these Nancys. I hate it. I hate them. I don't like them. They're bad. They make me uncomfortable. They make me feel weird. I don't like them. Ansel Elgort? Oh. He definitely feels Nancy, no matter what. We just got to figure out who his Faja is. Isn't everyone, though, right? Everybody be Nancy? Dolph Lundgren? Dude, I can't believe they made a whole world of Nazis and made us fucking watch a world of Nazis, bro. Dude, this is kind of pretty good, too. I mean, there are no wrong answers because everyone is a Nazi. These people are all someone. Why not, right? <laughs> What was this? Ansel Elgort? Oh, wait, no, that's that kid. Joachim von Ribbentrop looks so familiar, and I don't know who he could be. Well, let's pull him up and frickin' find out. Give me one second, please. What's this goofball's name again? Carl Gebert. Whoops. Carl Gebert. Bro, I bet, dude, like, we don't even have to, like, this is probably just right, <laughs> right? Like, why not? I'll put it down here. This is, like, a low-priority one, you know? No offense, of course. Ah! All right, let's get back to our freaking... Weinbacher shit. Or no, wait, I wanted to look at Blair's Ribbentrop one. Joachim von Ribbon. Ooh, okay. Dude, like Anthony Hopkins, kind of. Er. No. This kind of does look like Anthony Hopkins, but Ribbentrop, where do I know that name? What, what, 
was he like a sniper or like a air like a fighter pilot or something? Foreign minister. Yeah, dude, who is this? Oh shit. Sorry, you weren't seeing it. Like this kind of looks like Anthony Hopkins, right? I'm not sure who this is. This could be Ooh, that's a striking face. Yeah, look at that hard ass dimpy. I'm gonna throw these in the Miro just for These are some good photos too. Finally, some good close ups. Yeah, this is somebody, Blair. Great intuition. We will figure it the frick out, dude. Yes, I hate these Nazis. I'm fucking done with all Nazis. Oh, stop, lady. Dude, you get fed and then two hours later, you must have dementia, dude. Get out of here. Don't you ever want to hang out with your dad instead of just being a mouth? Just sassing me all the time? You could be a, such a cute part of the show if you weren't a nightmare. Lolly. Come over here. She won't come over. Okay, what was... Yoakum? Dude, we're going to figure out every single one. Boink. Dude, this does kind of look like Anthony Hopkins. Dr. Evil, yeah. Taryn Edgerton. Ooh. That's pretty good, too. Fitting image. Come on, wake up, Miro. It's okay, sleepy. Dude, he's such a sweaty guy. Gross. Peter gives me such the heebie jeebies, dude. Freaking cloner.
Or, or, yeah, or Joel. Yeah, he looks, I'm thinking Joel Edgerton, right? Dude, that's pretty good. He, Andy's, he's pretty slamming and fucking, uh, in dark matter, though. So we're going to have to give him a pass, okay? <laughs> we're going to give... We're going to give Joel Edgerton a pass on being a Nazi clone because cause we like Dark Matter. That was a good one. <laughs> All righty, let's uh let's do a couple more minutes of talking about this freaking uh Carl Edgerton dude or Carl Weinbacher bro. Then we'll do something fun and then we'll freaking probably st stop stop streaming. It'll be the end of the night. But yeah, dude, th something's up with this, with this Carl fucking, this Carl dude. Rolf Mengele regarding his father? What's this? What are the differences between a soundbar, a home theater in a box, and just a speaker system? There's no a lot idea. confusion around which speaker system is a good fit for your needs. A soundbar system offers the simplest setup solution with great results. Home theater systems... He had, a stroke. It. he had a stroke, I heard, and then Sedelmeyer told me, look, he's not good, and maybe he's old, and it would great pleasure to him meeting you once, and I said, yes, it seems to me much better than to write uh, always these, these letters, forwards, backwards. And then I decided really um, to meet him, and of course, also to discuss. Also, some dude, Ted Bundy. He do be looking a little like Ted Bundy, and this is supposed to be Mengele's kid. Um, questions. It was a strange feeling. I saw him there standing in the door. It was the evening. I was surprised. This is your father. He looked to me old, small, somehow a little bit broken. And it was a very difficult uh, situation because I knew that for him it was one of the most important um, events in his older days. And um, I was a visitor and, and I was his son and, and I really had to push me somehow to give uh, um, a certain um, cordiality or a certain uh, expression of sentiments and and he was very very um, touched by the situation his eyes were wet and nearly to tears and uh, he was also very proud about the situation because he felt that everybody from the family would not have had the power to come to him and so he treated me somehow like a brave soldier, which came through the um, enemy's lines. I avoided... Uh, Dude, that the eyebrow! Of, um, f the, in the first days or of our meeting, I avoided to, to speak about... Dude! And, um, ...points, as it is um, Auschwitz. What do you guys think? 
the eyebrows are kind of like does Mengele link to John Deere some type of tractor company maybe I dreamt that what I hope so I mean probably right dude is am I tripping out does Joseph Mengele look a ton like like uh Ted Bundy I can't tell if I'm just having face face amnesia now. Oops. But there's something there's like a glimmer of something in his eye that they both have. It's like eerie, right? And the they got kind of the mutt muzzle. Oh my god, we're all dude, all of the serial killers are related. We know this. I, they're all fucking Libby's. <gasps> oh my God. We're so getting killed, dude. This is going to be the greatest. I can't believe this shit. Why is this all falling into our laps, guys? Why is it? Why is it our turn to get killed over something stupid like this? This is fucking bullshit. Like, y'all are doing really irreparable harm, and y'all act like we're the problems, Paul? What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Y'all got Joseph Mengele making freak-ass children in here, spreading Ted Bundy seeds all over, and you act like I'm the fucking problem? Get the- get real, dude. Get a freaking life, bro. <laughs> This is insane. The real test is sending this to Dante and Nicole. Not that, not that your guys' opinions don't matter. I very much value your opinions. But there's something different. You just need fresh eyes sometimes, you know? Dude, I'm saying this shit is looking pretty perfect. Pretty spot on. Dude, this is looking pretty perfect, right? Oh my god, this is crazy. They're gonna love this one. Look, it's a little Christmas present. Oh my god, dude, yes, the glimmer in the eye is so right. You guys are so fucking right. Let's go! Who said this? Blair? Who did this? I'm proud of all of you. It doesn't matter who. But I also do care who did who said it. I forget. Dude, this is crazy. Mengala and <laughs> Oh my god. We're getting killed, dude. Let's ask, let's ask Elon real quick. Hey, Elon. Are you half brothers? <laughs> Am I going to get lose my account over this? <laughs> With Ted Bundy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bundy's always look like the guy who played Dexter Oh yeah, Michael C. Hall <laughs> oh 
Hey, hey, Elon, are you and your son, Thomas Matthew Crooks, related to, <laughs> related to Ted Bundy? Just wondering. <laughs> oh, man. We gotta let's go get some cooked cooked Elon. Oh, little Elon Muskrat. That's a pretty good one too. I like that. Dude, like, what is this one up to? What is this? fucking war boy Liebensborn doing? Are you half brothers with Ted Bundy? Just wondering. Thanks for making Twitter such a such a space for free speech. Appreciate you and cooked Elon. Dude, I'm saying. Right? Dude, you guys are the best. You called it. Let's go. Gug moment. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Dude, we're gonna like crack the book of life, bro. Like, this shit is literally connected to everything. They're all of the serial killers, bro. This is nuts. Fucking crazy, dude. <gasps> the muskrat. That's good shit. All right, cool. But P. Diddler, put P. Diddler next to your therapist, specifically the ears. Shut up, dude. Ah, <gasps> dude, he's got freaky ears. Dude, there is something freaky about P. Diddy, right? Dude, what's up with that? Dude, these little boy pictures of Peter are insane, right? The angriest five-year-old in history. Please, sir, can I have some more? 
That poor little kid just getting fucking rammed by George H.W. Bush. Yuck. It's okay, little board. Little Miro board. You're okay. You got it. Come on. Come on, little guy. Here you go. <laughs> we don't need all this bullshit. We just need them big old frickin' weird elf ears. What's up with them? Yo. What the fuck? Yo, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> Diddy a mouth breather. <laughs> Dude, is my therapist P. Diddy? <laughs> this is pretty great. Hilarious. Doesn't matter. Even if not true, even if, like, not both grown in Petri dishes, but, like, let's be real, guys. What are the chances... What are the chances that both of these people are not grown in Petri dishes? Zero. It's okay. It's okay, cloner. It's okay, you little cloner. It's okay that you don't have a soul. We'll make you figure it out. That person on the roof, lying prone on the roof, does not look like Thomas Matthew Crooks. Everything that we hear about his background does not match with what took place at this incident. If who was on the roof was actually Jaxwell Munthrick, again, I know that's not his name, but YouTube is monitoring for people saying his actual name. But if that was not Thomas Matthew Crooks on the roof, then who was Thomas Matthew Crooks? Thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like. As any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, I fuck with this guy. Yeah, dude. Oh, look, Joe. Wow, this dude's have this dude's on the cutting edge. Let's go. We love this guy. Minutes of horror. He's already on the fucking Joe Biden got assassinated story. He beat us to it. A new theory here, growing on the internet, and this theory involves Biden. Now, look. I don't see myself as a conspiracy theorist channel. I see myself as a person that looks at the news, looks at social media, keep my eye out on what people are talking. About. I know, Blair, I know, I, I, we need to discern the clones from, <laughs> but you, no, you, but you weren't, like, grown in a, you weren't grown in a fucking jar. Like, these people were grown with test tubes, like, they were grown out of a vial. Like, you were just insperminated in a petri dish you didn't come to term in a petri dish these motherfuckers came to term in glass and water and like fuck you know and i mean it's not the cloning maybe it is i don't know who the fuck knows right dude the video where i was like Oh, this app wants me to say it's Jewish people. 527 views. Ah, that's crazy. And then the other video where I said, hey, Paul, stop, stop deleting my, or reporting my videos. 31 views. If you say, if you go on t TikTok and you say it's Jewish people's fault, TikTok boosts your account. By like 2x. Well, boost my compared to mine, it's about 10x, but you know what I mean?
That is concerning. That should be very concerning to everyone. So concerning. Oh my God. <laughs> about strange discussions and things like that. And then I give my opinion on these discussions. One of these discussions that is slowly gaining steam on social media is that Joe Biden is missing and people are asking for proof of life. <laughs> I, can't, I can't make it up. This is what people are talking about. Now, don't so get me wrong. Good. I'm not laughing at the fact that people believe Joe Biden is missing. They want a proof of life. And there are people that are concerned about Joe Biden's well-being. I am laughing at the fact about just how crazy this week has been. And something like this taking place this week just falls in line with everything else that's been happening. Joe Biden had given a very firm stance when it came to staying in the race against Trump. Even Like, dude, it feels like maybe, maybe Peter Peel needed uh, to make sure his boy got in. Peter Peel is... The reptile is looking very rough right now. He is looking concerned. You know what I mean? And he's very deep into the Drogas. He needs to go to rehab. Holy fuck. <laughs> what the hell? That man is about to fucking eat a bullet in a bunker, it looks like. Except that never happened, so he wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's a freaking... It's like post-war Schmittler, buds. Blah. After this horrid debate, people said in his own party, they said that you have to step down. No, I am staying. Donors were leaving. No, I'm staying. No matter what was thrown at Biden, he was staying. Then out of nowhere, just randomly, only... Yeah, they were created with ill intentions, and then they, and then they upkept those ill intentions even knowing the sinister background of, you know, why they're there. And they've chose not to do fucking anything about it. All of them, these war boy Libby's. So, yeah, we, we'll, we'll, I need to figure out how to navigate it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not ripping on my IVF babies, just all the cloners. <laughs> It's not even really the clone's fault, you know, but like you don't get just because you're a clone, you don't get to act insane and like treat the rest of us like we're, a, you know, fucking NPCs, too. You no, know, you are an NPC, dog. Like keep the rest of us out of it. Like they shouldn't be able to kill us like how the robots can't kill the humans in Westworld, at least for a little bit, you know. They shouldn't be able to kill us, though, because they're, like, they're grown. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they have cheat codes. They get to get regrown. Days after this whole Trump situation, I guess Biden saw the writing on the wall and said, I give up. I'm stepping down. That's it. And, you know, dude, literally the day before he said he was resigning, AOC and him were like, no, stop asking questions. We are not entertaining that. Like, dude, <laughs> did they fucking whack him, dude? Did the Secret Service <laughs> take him out? <laughs> what? It can play out exactly like that way. Biden saw that this attempt on Trump's life only made him stronger, made him more popular. And he was like, I can't compete against Trump anymore. I'm Wait, his uh, astrological chart said he was going to fall gravely ill because of a transit that occurred in his chart on the full moon in Capricorn? What? <laughs> Dude, I got to learn how to read these astrologies. Where did you, uh, how did you hear that? I want to know. That's awesome. Will you guys tell me when you read when I'm going to get struck down, when I'm going to get smote down? Pretty please. Stepping down. Biden just got this epiphany. But people are pointing out that a couple of things about Biden stepping down do not look right. Something strange is going on here. Some of these points that people are making seems to be pretty valid. For instance, this comes directly from Todd Starnes on Twitter. Todd Starnes states, something smells. Why would President Biden announce such a momentous and historic decision on a Sunday afternoon on a social media platform? And yeah. I'm not going to lie to you all. That seemed kind of odd to me, too. Why not make such a major announcement on a Monday? Why choose a Sunday? But more importantly, why Twitter? 
why would you choose a social media platform yeah. to announce that you as the president, the current president of the United States, so weird. is no longer seeking re-election? You are stepping down from the race. Why would you post that on Twitter? Now, I do get that he may be sick. They did say that he had the C-19, but maybe that was the perfect setup. Maybe that was a setup so he would not be... Dude, I'm telling you, this reeks of Peter Thiel. Biden proof of life? Stop. <laughs> Biden cancels nine trips, extends Delaware stay. Biden has canceled nine scheduled trips for the next two weeks. A White House source revealed that Biden's planned West Coast tour... Yeah, this dude is dead. <laughs> this dude's dead as fuck, bro. The big guy. <laughs> Paul Hindenburg. <sighs> These Nazis, bro. They're disgusting. ...seen on camera or not give any major announcements. They can just say he's sick and he's going to release a statement on Twitter. If he was sick, why not wait until you feel better to give such a major announcement? This man is boosted up to the socks, supposedly boosted up to the socks when it comes to the C-19 vaccine. Yeah. This is his third time, I believe, getting the C-19. So you would think he would wait until he felt better to give such a major announcement and not release this announcement on a social media platform. Even if Biden is later seen on camera giving a speech or talking about dropping out of the race, it still seems like a very tacky way to make such a major announcement. Come to find out one day after- Yeah, dude, just tweeting it is crazy. This is a thing that you have- You get up and you fucking make an announcement, bro. He's dead as fuck, dude. He's dead as fuck, bro, in my opinion. This is weird as hell. Bro, we're getting like, this is like Hunger Games level shit. Did they just do an audio mess? They just did a fucking, we got him on the phone with the, a, with the clearly AI Joe Biden. They just AI Biden us. Are you fucking kidding me? Is this, this is today? This was a couple hours ago? Shut up, dude. What the hell? This is insane. Bro, they are, they killed it. They killed the Joe for for the fucking blood for the baby drinker? Oh my goodness. They took the subby sabo out? Fuck. That was our best case to get a, to get everyone to fucking hate the Nancys. This is crazy, dude. Hold on. Dude, she just cooed. <laughs> she just cooed Joe Biden, bro. <laughs> this fucking evil witch. This evil witch was she probably hanging out with the the one witch from uh the Kardashians, dude, with the fucking black fingers. Dude, this evil witch definitely definitely has cooed joe biden Ugh. god damn it this is incredible guys we live in the worst world possible this is truly the worst world we could possibly have and we it's ours for all the messages yes i i received it loud and clear Biden stepped out on a Capricorn full moon. The last one conjunct with Pluto that I believe, oh my gosh, it's, it's uh, sometimes astrology is too real and so much for me. One of the old titty titans, okay? During, during a full moon in Capricorn 
where Saturn rules, where age rules, okay? <laughs> while Saturn is in retrograde, while its ruler is in retrograde, we reflect and we're like, wait a minute. No. Nope. We gotta re we've got to reap what we sow. We either got to go like this and embrace it or we've got to change direction now. That was a lot of what this full moon was about. And I'll talk about that. Adam's the master. He is the teacher. He is wisdom, okay? And during, we had two full moons <laughs> to make sure it was illuminated. <clears throat> full moons in a sign that's ruled by Saturn who is in retrograde right now. And the whole... It, it was like, no, we have to stop. We've reflected. This doesn't work. He can't do this. He can't be here anymore. This isn't his place. This full moon was in his second. It was illuminated what was really his and what the fuck is not. That Mars Uranus conjunction was in his sixth house, in his day to day, in his health, also opposing near his son in his 12th. Only thing I've ever said about Kamala, and I'll stand by it, is that the people who should support her really don't. So that's why so many people were like, why aren't you talking about Kamala? Why aren't you talking about her? Because I don't, I don't think she's going to be a part of it. Now, a lot of people use different charts for America, and that's argued. Um, I just think it's really interesting. This, again, was in America's second house, much like Joe. He had to realize this wasn't his. Yeah, his supply got cut off of Adreno. And now Kamala's got fucking double dose. You know, she's like, I get 2x Adreno starting tonight, right? That's the deal. 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 And then someone's got to come and fucking snap her out of it and do the MK Ultra tricks. Dude, you guys have seen, like, Beyonce is in a weird trance like this too like dude it's like the same thing as fucking uh wendy wendy williams everyone is in this fucking crazy trance what is going on everyone's in a reptile trance the fuck are they just is dude is peter teal literally just handing out fucking poppers is that what's going on like everyone's just like <laughs> what is happening they're all whacked out on some, like, high-grade pharmaceutical that no one else has access to or something. And it makes them trip nuts and and then be Nazis. What the fuck is going on, dude? What world do we live in? Why is it like this? He, America natally has Pluto there, though. Because we've been in that American uh, Pluto return, if you've heard about that, okay? Pluto and Cat Bear. America's also having its kind That's right. The 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 trance is a, a side effect of the disassoci dissociative splitting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cuz that's I mean that's what they're doing, right? They're splitting their fucking personalities. Like even though they piss me off, we do we do I guess got to have a little fucking compassion for them, but fuck them at the same time cuz they really 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 make everything shit. And they're going to get us all fucking killed. <laughs> But, um, yeah, man, they fucking torture them and, you know, do horrible fucking acts to them until their brain gets so overwhelmed that it literally splits personalities to save itself from the fucking horror that it's currently experiencing. That's fucked. And it's gross. It, adults doing that is fucking disgusting. And they should take themselves out, honestly. Anyone who does it, I don't care if it's because your fucking job tells you to do it. You stupid. How disgusting. And then the people who thought of this, fucking dude. Sun launched into the sun. Like, a anyone can do fucking anything. As long as it does not hurt other people. That's it. That's the rules of life. End of story. Do whatever you want. As long as it doesn't hurt us. Nope. Everything. They say everything has to hurt you guys. We have to fucking take everything and ruin everything and kill everyone and make life fucking miserable for no reason. We're on return in the fifth. That's why I
But that's fine, dude, because it's like, that's another reason worth fight, you know, worth fighting for. Because literally, what is the alternative that we're all just going to be like, yeah, yeah, we live in the Fourth Reich, we know that, and we're okay with it. The, the fucking, the rent's really good. <laughs> no, the fuck it isn't. Think all, They've got nothing. All the kids are rising up. But look, Saturn and Libra, we're, we've got to recorrect. We're paying for a lot of past mistakes. We are trying to right this ship. I don't know. I think it's interesting, though, that, like, Biden and America have, like, the same, like, house systems. And I'm talking about them in the same way. And we're talking about old teddy babies and old ideas dying and stuff. Astrology is just too interesting sometimes. Yeah, Libby babies. Libby ideas are gonna die. What is this Tucker Carlson thing? Oh, Tucky's on on TikTok? That's sweet. He gets to have a tank tonk? I don't. I'm not allowed to. See? Wait, did... Oh, no, this is the one that wasn't deleted. Yeah, dude, look. If you say it's Jewish people... Well, they took my third account in seven days, guys. Uh, everything's normal over here at TikTok. TikTok's a normal place. What are you talking about? It's just a normal, normal place that's safe for people and definitely safe for kids. And, this is crazy. And I think Ian Carroll's right that it is... It, <laughs> it is Jewish people, right? Right? Right, app? But yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll probably take that down. But I, I mean, I need to prove a point, you know, like I, I've, I've fucking said my, you know, I took the risk, like I, they could, they could try and flip that and do whatever. But, um, I've fucking made my stance pretty fucking clear at this point, you know, like, um, but it, it's clear to me, man, this app should not be doing this. I should not say it's the it's because of the Jews, which is what I don't believe in. I'm saying that because it's the opposite of what I've been saying, which gets me fucking banned every goddamn day, you know? Like, this is fucked up. And, like, if we had any news or anything, they would be writing about shit like this, but we don't. We've got Taylor Lorenz, a fucking Nazi whose grandpa made Zyklon fucking B, and now she's a progressive tech writer. That's the what the fuck we have. That's it. We've got Taylor Lorenz, a fucking social media owned by another Nazi, Elon Musk, another social media owned by another Nazi, Mark Zuckerberg, another social media owned by another Nazi, Oracle, Todd Beamer, whose ass did not fucking die in 9-11, lying ass bitch. What, what other apps are run by Nazis? All of them. Everything is run by Nazis. Lucian Graves, Nazi, not Jewish, fucker, lion ass. Oh, dude, this is so funny. Wait, Peter, stop. I didn't realize this This was kept in because this, I got banned from my account. I was I was replying to Feo's account on my uh, Cat Dad Resurrected. And I was making the video and midway through the fucking video, oh, they took I got, you know, the thing pops up and it says, your account has been banned permanently. I love that. It's so fucking cool. And then they take the video and they switch to your next account. And then the video just posts to your whatever the fuck next account you're on. You don't get to pick. Uh, but I didn't realize... I just posted this because I was uh, like fucking, you know, eh, fuck it, whatever. But I thought that it was paused, but it wasn't. Look My at this. third account in seven days, guys. Uh, Everything's normal over here at TikTok. TikTok's a normal no, wait, place. What do you this one. Peter, stop reporting all my videos just because we know that you're on that Tina. <laughs> Very ironic. It's so fucking funny and ironic. Peter knows what I'm talking about. It's so fucking funny, right, Peter? Right, Peter and Alex Crap. C -c 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 Crap.
Boom, that's where it came up. <laughs> Whoops, whatever. Fuck it. Who care? What do we care, boys? <laughs> Who fucking cares at this point, right? <laughs> Peter, stop <laughs> reporting all. Damn it. I wish I would have realized that. It would have been funny to just pop up. This is where I was banned. <laughs> Cat Dad Show is the funnest and the funniest, dude. Stop, Gug Gug. I love this. I love having fun. And honestly, dude, like, not even I'm not bragging or anything, but I I think I'm decent at this. And mostly, I just know for a fact that I am being held back intentionally. You know, like it's not right. It's not okay that our government, like, dude, this is my business. Okay. We're fucking America. You want everyone to be fucking business extremists? Show me the show me the fucking power of capitalism and let me fucking build my business. Come on, let me fu let me fucking ch you know chip away at all my morals once I get fucking success. Come on, show me how awesome capitalism is, you fuckers. But no, I've got these asshole feds, the feds who make content for everyone and they don't know. They're just swallowing this garbage, dude. And it pisses me so much. It pisses me off so fucking much, dude. You know, these fucking assholes. These stupid feds. They don't even know what they're doing, man. They, they're they so half-assed with everything. Never half-ass anything. Whole-ass every... whole ass, Never half-ass two things. Whole-ass one thing, dude. Y'all feds can't even do fed shit good. Don't, dude, get the fuck out of the content game, you nasty rats. God, I hate them. They ruin everything, dude. They ruined all art. They ruined fucking music. They ruined fucking all fun. You can't even go and do anything anymore because the fucking feds, d dude. Like <sighs> this world that they've built is trash and it fucking sucks. Anyway. <laughs> They have ass everything they do. Duder or Pi Paul Weisopel? Great. <laughs> Not Paul, guys. Public warning. Most Nancys don't wear swa stickers. Familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with these symbols. Yeah, dude. And this is like... I've... I've always thought this shit was a joke because it's so corny, right? This is corny ass loser shit. But you you got to remember, we're talking about corny ass losers, guys. Now, and I'm not even saying like they are fucking losers. Like, you know, they're a bunch of losers. But worse, they're actual losers. They're lo they lost the Civil War like a bunch of cowardly bitches. And then they fled to Germany. And they said, we're going to do Nazi stuff. We're going to plan our deceitful rise again to power. We're going to do it. Us, the Adlers, the Nazis, probably slave-owning family, if I have any fucking brains. We're going to, we're going to, if we can't win fair and square because we're a bunch of bitches, then we're going to use deceit and cloning. <laughs> Stupid asses. So ugly. They're all so hideous. It's so funny. The Uber menches, you Peter Thiel, the sweatiest man in history. Get the fuck away from me, you rat. Dirty, dirty, dirty Nazis. Anyway. But yeah, dude, this these symbols and shit. And it sucks. They ruined all these. Some of these are cool. I like the Black Sun one is fucking cool looking. If you just if you don't know anything about it, you know? And dude, I've already told you, 88. Birth year, fucking great. Look at the, look at the, look at the, uh, the symmetry. It's beautiful. Two infinity symbols. As above, so below. I don't know. It's fucking cool. And then, nope, Nazis ruin it. Dude, even the Liebensborn, or the Liebes one is down, I think. Here, wait, let me remember. But yeah, they just picked. They, dude, this is just what they do, right? They pick cool shit and then they ruin it. That's like, that's the name of their game, brother. Take everything that's somewhat decent or cool and then make it fascist and suck. <laughs> and mostly they do it 
on purpose to destroy the previous culture, you know? Like, they make it suck so that people don't use these symbols anymore and they use them for fascism. Like, dude... Philly D being a Nazi now, like, everything makes sense, right? Like, truly, I can, beyond, like, figuring out, you know, like, meditating and stuff and all that and, you know, talking about the source and Thoth and all that kind of stuff, the Emerald Tablet shit, the other thing that has made me totally come to peace with everything is just the fact that we figured it out. Like, dude, this, I, I, I can walk away from this and be like, my work here is done. <laughs> I did it. This is what I was here for. It's to point these fucking rat faces out. All of them. Look at them. Dude. We've known it. We've all subconsciously known it. I feel like the faces have been telling me. <laughs> like, I can see it in all of them. You know? But, but yeah, anyway, here's the, here's the swath sticker. And the uh, frickin' Libby symbol. There's that damn thing. Oh yeah, so the Libby one is up. But yeah, dude. And don't let anyone gaslight you with this shit anymore. This is very well documented. Like, the these nerds use this shit all the time. Oh, the, the Jesse Setabor, uh... I think that's the document that showed me all the passwords for all these frickin' Nancys, and that's all, like, all of their passwords are 88, 88, you know. So that was what finally proved to me that these, they their numerology shit is real, dude. Like, literally, there was, like, 500 of their Nazi website passwords that leaked, and... I swear to God, dude, 90% of them had 88 in the password because of their fucking obsession with this. It's goofy. So weird. We should build a new one of these and know your enemy board. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, this is what we were just looking at. But for, um... What new symbols do we have to add to it? Wait, is that a Twitter verified a check mark? <laughs> is that a is that a goof? That's funny. But yeah, what's the ninety two? What what is all their numbers? They're so lame, dude. And then apparently eighteen sixty six is one. Chris Weisopel, you big goon. Chris, look, it's your family. Oh, oh Johnny, I'm going to need a little more speed. <laughs> Hitler, what a goofy clown. Dude, if anyone told me, if anyone came to me and my family and was like, yo, we've got a secret, you're Hitler's kid, I would fucking off myself. <laughs> Peter. Peter's like, this is so cool. Yeah, so this guy's Paul von Hindenburg, right? And he's a frickin' Nancy that helped... I forget what Blair... I think Blair said it. He was a Nancy who helped do something with Zyklon B, maybe. He's a bad one. They all are. But he's he's a good candidate for a person whose kid would be... Or, you know, like, grandkid would be around today. Dude, look at that mustache. I just want to just rock him one. You know, you pop him right in the nose and he'd go, <laughs> you know, like one of those. He'd sound like that lady. Remember when that lady fell out, out of the tub of grapes on YouTube? And she went, <laughs> that dude would sound like that if he ever got popped in the nose. He'd say, what the? You made me bleed my own blood? Dude, I can't believe Kamala Harris fucking murked Biden. That's a crazy town. It makes sense though, right? After dropping out of the race, there has been an update on Joe Biden's health. 
Reading this article from Newsweek.com, it says, President Biden completed his eighth dose of Paxlovid, an antiviral C-19 medication this morning, O'Connor wrote. His symptoms have improved significantly. His pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate, and temperature... Wait, how did how did Biden get COVID? I th- he I thought mission accomplished. Didn't they do? Wh- wait, didn't we? Com- I thought we defeated COVID. How does he have COVID? Wait, is COVID still going around, guys? Do not tell me that. Don't remain absolutely normal his oxygen saturation continues dude sometimes i feel like the government just lies to us do you know what i mean oh shit i paused this chat shit how long did i have that paused for sorry here's another whoops maury show hitler is the father Ooh, reinvented geometry Dude, I went and filmed um I went and filmed at a monastery once to watch uh monks make a mandala once and it was so cool. Dude, that that was my first like foray into meditation, I think. That was the first time I had ever that's the only time I had meditated before before recently, you know. Uh and it was in upstate New York. The place was beautiful, dude. It was in the Catskills. What is it? Uh, Buddhist Monastery, upstate New York. Hmm. Blue Cliff. That sounds. Or Mahana. Shoot. I forget which one. I feel like it was pretty far away. Semye Hermitage. I'll find it sometime and show you guys because it was pretty. But we filmed part of that show going deep. uh, And we watched them make a, a mandala all day, dude. And the whole thing with the mandalas is you make them. They're all beautiful and shit. And then you just wipe them away. Yeah, it's like cool shit like this. They make these little scenes and... And it's all made out of colored sand and they have them in these tubes. And then the tubes are like ribbed. And the tubes have holes on the bottom. It's like a pen, but hollowed out. And you put sand inside of the whole thing. And then it's like a... Not maracas, but uh. What are those called? A weiro? It's like a weiro, you know, the... So they just sit there and they rub a, you know, a metal metal bar onto another metal bar and it makes it, makes the sand pour out. But it's pretty peaceful. It's nice. It's cool. And then they, uh, you know, we like spent the whole day there, watched them do it, and they like fed us and stuff, and and they taught us, they had us do like a hour meditation with them. I remember even then being like, oh, this is kind of cool, but then I never did anything more with it. But I like it now. I almost blasted off today, boys. I'm telling you, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make my freaking my spirit splash and. Going straight to the source, and I'm going to have a fight with that man. I am going to beat the fuck out of the source. And then I'm going to apologize, and I'm going to get some answers. Hmm. Yeah, they see, see, they bastardize everything. This is from, like, a Hopi shawl, I think, or a bowl, it says. They steal this shit. 
Oh, dude, the ancient goddess symbol. These all look fucking cool, man, right? And then they ruin everything. Classic Nancy's. We hate them. These two be excellent on room air. His lungs remain clear. The president continues to tolerate treatment without any difficulty and will continue Paxlovid as planned. He continues to perform all of his presidential duties, O'Connor wrote. Joe Biden has had more votes than any president in history combined. And I'm not talking just in the United States, but I'm talking about if you combine every president, every world leader. Dude, there's no chance that Kamala's husband isn't German royalty, right? Well, who is that guy? Who's that goofy, lumbering, frickin' Roger Clyer-like Sasquatch? <laughs> Throughout history combined. Look at that. Is that a big-ass chin? I can't tell. Joe Biden beats them all many, many times. And not just on Earth. So you would owe it to all those people who voted for you. Yeah, dude, it's honestly, cr thinking about it now, it's crazy that he fucking dropped out with this bogus letter. There's no way he's alive. He's dead as fuck, dude. To come out and give them a statement that you are dropping out, not just leave some cheesy post on Twitter. The man is old, minutes of horror. He's elderly. He was probably trying to take as much precaution as he possibly could. They're trying to cook a clone so fast right now, dude, and I'm telling you, they should stop because they're going to pull something out. They're going to pull this out, bro, and no one is going to like it. Oh, brother. You guys know where I'm going. <laughs> They're going to pull this version of Joe out. Hey, Jack. I'm here. I'm back. I, I take it back. I want to run. I want to run. I want to run again. I want to run. Wait, what did you say? Who are you talking to? This is Joe Brandon's clone. What? No, I'm not talking to you. Shut up. Wait, who Who do you want to talk to? I'm Joe Dash's clone. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my earpiece. Hold on. I'm a fed. Yeah, it's a clone. Oh, don't talk. About, oh, never mind. I'm not talking to anyone. It's just me and b here. The muskrat. <laughs> okay. Um... Stop horsing around, guys. We're, this is serious business here, okay? We could. Well, like I said, he could have given the statement in a speech, a live speech, when he felt better. But whatever. Todd Starnes also says the letter he posted was not written on White House stationery, and his signature appeared to be photoshopped. Also, Biden's signature was underlined, and typically he does not underline his name. That is also true. You would think this letter would be on a... Bro, it do be looking fucking like... You know when you take the signatures in preview and you can save a signature? That's what that looks like. Bro, they killed the president. Oh, my God. And then they keep deleting my accounts? What the fuck, dude? Go go do, go do solve some crime, dude. They're, Paul, here's a real thing you can go solve. Actually, you probably helped do it. A official White House letterhead. Also, the signature... I don't get it though. Is it literally just you know okay, so dude, do you know how reality TV works? Have you ever seen the show um Unreal? It's awesome, but it's like a behind the scenes about a reality show, you know, like a dating show. And basically, you know, it's like show like the the producers and stuff and the PAs and the crew. It shows it's just the behind the scenes and it dramatizes film sets, which are as much, you know, like reality shows in themselves usually. Because film sets always have the coolest people, like in the crew. They're always the most interesting people I've ever met. I love all the, the crew and who work in film. But, um, but the whole show basically is like, you know, these producer, these like, there's like teams of producers that have teams of cast members, right? And it's not, it's not scripted in like that from the start people know what's going to happen but it's scripted in that like a producer's working with this contestant to kind of try and you know sometimes they're like trying to cause the most drama or cause the most you know whatever but it's like it's not like 
these reality shows are reality, right? You know, but the sh the the show is awesome, and uh, I don't know why I'm telling you about it, but it's fucking great. And I think that oh oh no, that the Leebies are probably like this, in you know the their war boy antics. Like, is this like a rogue fat? Like, dude, either way, it's either a Nazi Trump who's a Nazi. It's a Nazi Biden, who's a Nazi, whose dad literally came here on a U-boat, or it's Nazi Kamala, who's who's fucking part of the Luciferian Brotherhood from someone who's pretty credible, you know? So, is it just like rogue Libes that are just literally saying, I live, I die, I live again, and killing, you know, like, like, is it like a, a, a couple teams of these Libes that are trying to you know, fight for the Game of Thrones, you know? What the fuck is going on, man? Like, they're all... Aren't they all supposed to be on the same team? <laughs> I don't know. This is crazy. What, can't any day just be normal? Like, I, I don't ever want to hear about our government. You know what I mean? I should never have to hear about this shit. I should never have... Like, it's madness, dude. This is part of our psychosis, too. Like, this, you should never hear from your government. I don't ever, ever, ever want to hear from you unless you're, like, sending money or something. Or, like, or canceling money, you know? Like, we, we should, the government should not be deciding every fucking thing about our lives every single day and making our lives fucking this miserable. It's crazy that we put up with it, dude. It does look a little off. It does look photoshopped. People will say that maybe he wasn't well enough to sign his own name. But as the previous article had stated, as his doctor had... Dude, yeah, Hillary definitely spirit cooked for Kamala. And Kamala is probably... Yeah, probably... yeah. Oh, dude, that's what we said yesterday, that Kamala is definitely one of Hillary's, you know, slaves. Because they're... I'm sure it runs just like Nexium because it's the same people. Of course it runs just like Nexium. You know what I mean? So... Hillary is probably so freaking mad that her freaking slave got to be president, lady president, before her Nazi ass got to be lady president. She said, I'm going to have an extra branding session with you, young lady. I'm going to brand you just like we did in Nexium. <laughs> Had stated. He's doing fine. Now, if somebody was indeed trying to forge his signature, it does look a little forged, but maybe he had a hard time writing. I don't. Dude, the, the underlining is very curious, right? I don't know. But if somebody was indeed trying to forge his name, why would they add the underline under his signature? Something he normally does not do. I mean, why make the forgery so obvious? But then again, why would he add the underline? If you look at the R in his supposed forged signature, it does look rather off to the other R's in his other signatures. Yeah. Todd Starnes continues to say, Joe Biden's staff, his aides, only found out once the message had been posted on Twitter, and cabinet members were notified by the chief of staff. Dude, he's dead as fuck. There's no way. Dude, his, his staff found out from that letter? From that Twitter letter? What? He's dead as fuck, bro. Dude, we are getting like. Was it Gorbachev? Who was the one that died that ever? Then they hid, or tr or like Lenin, or no? Joe Dash is his name. <laughs> not Biden. Now that is rather suspicious. Biden's aides were not aware that Joe Biden had stepped down. Who is Trump related to? Well, I think the Trumps are just Nancys, right? Like, they were... F I'm not sure. They've got to be someone. But I feel like Fred Trump was that Trump's dad. And then John Trump was his uncle, the one who stole all of Tesla shit for the FBI. He's got to be a... Na they've all got to be Nazis, right? I mean, weren't the Trumps... Yeah, what were the Trumps doing during Nazi times? I'm sure they were doing Nazi shit, right? <laughs> but yeah, they're, I mean, they're either Nazis or ideologically they are Nazis, so it doesn't matter. Like, they're all literally playing frenemies on TV, you know what I mean? Like, Joe Biden and Trump probably fucking drink a child weekly together and, like, hang out. You know, like that... 
You ever hear, you ever read that freaking, uh, <laughs> that court document about that young girl that said that Epstein and Trump uh, assaulted her and shit? The most credible shit I've ever read. <laughs> They've only proved us more and more right, that that is right more and more, but anyway. Like, they do that kind of stuff, you know? I don't know. Fuck these people. Fuck all these people. Until they saw the message. They're so monstrous, bro. And then they've all got the fucking, <laughs> the codes for the nukes? What the hell? On Twitter, like everybody else, the cabinet members were notified only one minute before... The entire public knew That's that Joe Biden was stepping crazy. down. Now, look, I can look past the signature. I can look past the weird way he made the announcement. But it's rather odd how not even his aides knew that the cabinet members only knew one minute before everybody else. What up, Giant Ryan? Knew. And they were only notified by the chief of staff. Trump grandfather left Germany, supposedly, and then tried to re-enter and they wouldn't let him. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Yeah, Trump. Ooh, yeah, wait. Are the Trump Trumps and the Clintons? Ooh, I like that. But yeah, they're all friends drinking kids on the side. They literally know to it's that it's an act like they I bet behind the scenes they talk about it so explicitly, dude. I bet it'll make you sick. Like how they have to deceive us, you know? Like they know that they have to like act a certain way in public and then behind closed doors dude i think like what well uh isaac cappy said was that like seth green was like proud of the fact that he was like a p-word he said he was like telling him like excitedly like like isaac cappy would fucking be like oh cool oh can i be a nazi child eater with you yuck not Biden. Even if Joe Biden does come out on camera and give some kind of announcement, give some kind of speech. This is so like this, the SS, the Secret Service, you know, the Stoffel. <laughs> they definitely killed Biden, dude. <laughs> this is why Champion or whatever kept biting them. They he knew that they were gonna fucking whack him. They're, dude, uh, this is crazy. Another coup. I love it. Will that really be by, by Kamala Harris? KKK Kamala Harris. Holy shit. Biden. Will that be AI Biden? Will it be a body double? He will come out on camera, give a speech, and people will say, there you go, Mensa Horror. There's Joe Biden. See, you were wrong once again. And they will oddly look past the fact that we have AI. But going back to what Todd Starnes is saying, and we're not even. Dude, they just did the AI. Literally, right? Wasn't that Kamala thing? That was literally AI. There was no shot that was Joe Biden. That was Synthara. <laughs> Even halfway through to what he's saying here, the last time the public saw Biden, he feebly walked down the stairs of Air Force One and had to be physically assisted into the presidential limo. He has not been seen in the public since. I looked the statement up and that was only four days ago. That's not really odd. That's not really a long time to not be seen on camera. But yeah, but just wait until it's more, right? Hi, Duder. What is? What are you doing, the silly smile? Oh, I thought you were doing like a devilish smile, like you had a treat or something. Oh, damn! No treats, boys. But as you can see, no, he's that's not true. There's there's mint chocolate chip ice cream in the freezer that I'm gonna smash after stream. Right, Duder. Did you, dude, or did you hear jo Joe Biden is like, he might be toast. <laughs> He's like, uh, I don't know. There's like these, there was like that, a uh, weird, what is it called? The air force advisory thing that they kind of only do when, uh, like people are dying or dead. They like medivaced him out of the white house. I think. Yeah. He has COVID right now. Which is odd, because I thought that COVID was over, but I'm just a silly guy. Not wearing a mask. And he's it's not. It's not. Around people. If he has a C-19, you would think he would be wearing a mask. 
Todd Starnes says, how do we know Biden wrote that letter? And how do we know that Biden posted the letter on his Twitter page? There wasn't even an official White House photograph of the moment. His brother, Frank Biden, told CBS News that health absolutely was... Bro, Frank Biden here, he's the sneaky little snake we need to keep an eye on, right? It seems like Frank Biden might have sold his bro-bro out a little bit. Because, dude, that's another thing. Like, if it is just, like, literally, like, all of them, like, playing the great game, you know, like... You know, like, I could totally see them all, like, agreeing to be, like, to, like, have, like, a fun, like, still kill each other and stuff, but be, like, you know, they're, like, it's gonna be one of us Nazis, right? One of us has to win, but let's have fun and do, like, the <laughs> the Squid Games version of it, okay? So maybe they are trying to kill each other and shit, and they do have rogue teams, like, with producers... Like, they, like, most of these people are controlled, like, mostly by their handlers. I, even the president, dude. People, like, I always used to think of, oh, man, if I was the president, I'd stay up forever and I'd never, no one would ever tell me to go to bed, you know? But even the president, dude, is, like, answers to a bunch of people, you know what I mean? Like, those positions just, you become, like, servile to other people unless you can get there without fucking needing anyone to, you know, jerk you up there. Was the deciding factor on the decision, and then he told CBS selfishly, I will have him back to enjoy whatever time he has left. Is President Biden still alive? Is he awake? Is he alert? Is he in command of his facilities? With respect, we need to see proof of life. Todd Starnes really raises some good points. I don't think it's a bad thing to ask. I don't think it makes you a conspiracy theorist to want to see some proof of life when it comes to the president of the United States, especially how he stepped. Sacrifice Biden, pump Harris. We get a cop in office for eight and a half years. Let's go, boys. Don't come. Don't worry. I will never have to worry about that with you saying that. Down. When it I never will it comes to re-election. Now, look, there are many theories when it comes to Joe Biden. There are many people today that believe the real Joe Biden passed away a long time ago, that there have been actors playing as... Dude, I believe this, too. Yeah, I believe this, too. There is something up with this dude. Like, this dude is a burnt-out clone. He looks like it, bro, and he stopped working the same, I think. <laughs> As Joe Biden the whole time. You can't have it both ways. You can't say they're going to get rid of Biden now when they could have easily used one of his... Hold on. You guys want to see the cutest freaking monster man that there ever was? He just got his two teefers removed. His last two that, I, that we fucking told them to take out when we did his last dental exam. They said, oh, we left his two chompers in there. I said, what the fuck for? So that I have to get another bill? So I get another $3,000 bill? They said, yeah, yeah. This is capitalism, my friend. Do another yawn, buddy. Show us those teefers. But yeah, he's the most handsome man that ever was. How much you want to bet this was submarine? Donald Trump's grandfather survived an Alaska shipwreck. Here's what happened. Oh, my God. Dude, These all these people have these insane stories of how, how they didn't die in something. Like, they're all bullshitters, right? Dude, that's Baron Trump. Holy fuck a -rone. Right? That's Baron. <sighs> what is this? Donald Trump's grandfather survived an Alaskan shipwreck. Here's what happened. Holy fuck. Dude, that is barren. This has to go in the Miro too, dude. Everything goes in the Miro, guys. We're going to create... We're going to recreate our entire world in the Miro. And then we're going to live in the Miro, okay? Dude, this is crazy. Like, 
people can say whatever they want about our little, you know, picture tactic, but, bro, people's faces say a fucking lot, dude. A lot, a lot, a lot. You know what I mean? Like, your genetics say a fucking ton. Like, you can see... You can see instantly who's related from pictures. Where's my Tesla? Oh, yeah, it's over here. Keep forgetting. I gotta... I gotta... Condense my shit. I I know, I've got it freaking spread out all crazy. We need to... I need to figure out how to... I need to figure out a good structure, a good way to organize all this shit so it all connects and makes sense and isn't just insanity, but my cousin Carl, my cousin Carl Duckworth, where is, okay, Trump grandfather. Like, dude, I kind of fuck with the Ingersoll Lockwood, like, uh, Trump's grandpa or something is, like, a kid who who jumped into a time travel portal or something and shouldn't have, and, like... Dude, that's barren, bro. Barren alert. Okay, here, while I research, I'm going to put up, uh, I'm going to read that article. Well, I'm going to make Siri read the article. The phone rang Monday afternoon as I was trying to piece together new information on what happened to Donald Trump's grandfather when he was shipwrecked in Alaska 100. And 18 years ago, Mr. Trump is no longer self-funding. A recorded voice barked, asking for an emergency investment of $1,000 in exchange for an exclusive signed photo of Donald Trump, suitable for framing. I resisted the urge to make an emergency investment and went back to reviewing the record of Friedrich Trump, the German immigrant who spent a brief period in the Yukon and Alaska during the Klondike gold rush. A New York Times story published Monday includes a one-paragraph reference to an incident that had gone unreported anywhere as far as I can tell. It tells of how Donald Trump's grandfather survived an 1,898 shipwreck on Cherkov Island, about 80 miles southwest of Kodiak. Cherkov Island? He was in Cherkov Island, dude? That is so classic Trump, right? Cherkov Island, hilarious. I wonder, do you guys get that same thing where the, uh, where the, the, like, pixels come in when you drag pictures? I just want to drag pictures from Google and not frickin' save them, you know? I just want to be quick and not frickin' organize. But sometimes I guess you gotta frickin' organize, right? The Times story also included a quote from Donald saying reports that his grandfather had anything to do with prostitution in the Yukon 116 years ago were totally false. The Trump claimed that the report is totally false as false. In 1900, Fred Trump and a partner ran the new <laughs> the, the false The false claim is false, guys. Of course it is. He's a fucking liar, dog. A partner ran the new Arctic Hotel and restaurant next to the railroad depot in Bennett, a town on the White Pass and Yukon route from Skagway to Whitehorse. On the 17th of April, 1900, the Yukon Sun newspaper in Dawson ran an unsigned column by a writer who warned respectable women traveling alone or with an escort to stay away from Trump's hotel. If respectable women stayed in the hotel, the writer said, they are liable to hear that which would be repugnant to their feelings and uttered to you by the depraved of their own sex. Donald Trump's grandfather got rich in the Yukon with hotels known for female companionship. That's enough to be reasonably certain that Trump's hotel catered to people of all kinds completely in keeping with the standards of a rough and tumble northern town. For single men, the hotel was great, the Yukon Sun writer said, and it had the best food in town. Most of what we know about Fred Trump, Donald's grandfather, comes from a good 2000 book by Gwenda Blair published last year with a new title, The Trumps, Three Generations of Builders, and a Presidential Candidate.
Well, you know, we got to see if that's on archive.org. Tr the Trump's three gen like dude, yeah, it, it's it's always these like five families that keep appearing, dude. What the fuck is going on with this? You know, it's like the Trumps, the Kennedys, the the Kennedys have kind of fallen out by now, but like these parallels from like a hundred years ago keep popping up and stuff. It's so weird, dude. Three generations of builders. B yeah. Fucking scammers. Blair said she was careful not to label Fred Trump as a pimp, but the lack of evidence has not stopped others from jumping to that conclusion and the search for sensation. In a phone conversation one day, Blair said she had never come across the shipwreck story mentioned to the Times reporter by family historian John Walter. She said she talked to Walter as part of her research in the 1990s but she said he never gave her any information that she didn't already have. Walter told the Times reporter of the letter Fred Trump wrote to his family in German about the shipwreck on Cherkov Island, concluding with the words, We have hope that the United States government will now. There is only one 1,898 shipwreck listed on Cherkov Island in the history books, that of the schooner Elsie which ran aground on the 25th of April, 1898. A story Wait a second. Fred Trump wrote to his family in German about the shipwreck on Chirikov Island, concluding with the words, We have hope that the United States government will now... What? Well, now what? Bro, everything is connected to this. <laughs> like, it feels like it, right? Like, dude, this, all this is like a dark loop. You know, like the TV, the Netflix show, Dark. This is a dark loop that we're all trapped in because something the Trumps did. Right, like this is Baron Trump, the, or Fred Fred Trump, right? This is the fa the grandfather, Fred Trump Senior, Fred Trump, actually, right, right? Isn't that how it is? Fred Trump Senior, I think. Dude, it's so weird how it's just Baron. <laughs> Story on the shipwreck in the San Francisco Chronicle on the 17th of July, 1898, listed 30 people on the manifest, including F. Trump. The Elsie left Seattle on the 4th of April, 1898, bound for the Kotzebue area, because of reports that natives on rivers were trading gold, which probably meant the rivers had gold. One of the passengers later told his hometown newspaper in North Dakota. Yo. Yo, dude, sometimes the internet is cool, right? Okay, wait, where is this? Shipwrecked. Charlie Thronson's adventure on his trip to Alaska. Charlie Thronson of this city who left in the late winter months for the gold fields of Alaska returned on Sunday after a most exciting and eventful experience. When he left here, he had his plans all arranged for all arranged for going to the Copper River region of which he had heard most glor glowing supports principally through columns of the newspaper but after arriving at Seattle it took him a short time to 
where's the part about freaking? is there any drum mentions in here or is it just this dude talked about this shipwreck fuck it don't care what's this real quick I don't know what you would... What's a coincidence that you think about a lot? I don't know what you would consider a lot, but I've thought about this every day for the past two years. In 18... Yeah, dude, Matty Ice, we love him. 88, a man named Ingersoll Lockwood wrote a book called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, where a 10-year-old boy named Baron Trump, who has a mentor named Don, who is a rich man who lives on Fifth Avenue in New York City, he and Don travel to Russia to find a portal to a magical underground world. The third book in the series is called 1900 or the Last President, where Don runs for president, gets elected. His mentor's name is Pence. Uh, there are protests and riots in the streets because he's not a politician. He's a rich man. He fixes the economy and they mess with the election of 1900. And when he goes to plead his case, he is silenced by the Speaker of the House. There's a lot of coincidences right there. Also, I guess it's a coincidence that Ingersoll Lockwood lived in New York City at the same time as Nikola Tesla, who was working on time travel and teleportation and all sorts of craziness. When Nikola Tesla died in 1943, the FBI gave all of his unfinished research to John Trump, Donald Trump's uncle, who is the longest tenured professor at MIT. That means he's a fed. He was given, I believe, 38 trunks of information. He only gave 35 back, stating that it was all theoretical. Interesting. Lioness. I guess it's also a coincidence that IngersollLockwood.com is owned by John McAfee, who tweeted that he had 31 terabytes of information on the government. And if they ever whacked him, he w had a dead man. Oh, fuck. Anyway, John McAfee said that he had 31 terabytes of information on the government that was connected to a dead man switch in his Miami penthouse. Less than 12 hours after he was found dead in his cell in France, a building in Miami just mysteriously just fell down. That's a coincidence, right? I haven't even talked about Back to the Future yet, but John Trump died in 1985, which is the same year as Back to the Future came out. Uh, in Back to the Future 3, the doc writes a letter from 1885 to 1955 to let Marty know where he is in time. Could these books be a message to somebody from 1885 into the future? As long as we're talking about Back to the Future, in the first movie, Marty shows up at the Twin Pine Mall at exactly 1.16 a.m. You turn that upside down, that's 9-11. When he comes <laughs> back from the past, it is now Lone Pine Mall. Twin Towers. And now we have <laughs> the One World Trade Center. Coincidence. It's coincidence. Sure, it's nothing. And yeah, I've spent a little bit of time researching this coincidence. And... I still got nothing. I, I don't know. Time travel, it's probably real. Like, time travel exists now. Like, I... Feels yep. like it. Feels kind of a little bit like it, right, guys? What is the CIA doc? Nineteen hundred twenty twenty, yap, MIT Fed. <laughs> Ted Ted Bundy's father is known, dude. What are you talking about, Gug? We got him. We know who Ted's father is. You know what would be sweet is if you had a button over here to the left, like in this thing, in the toolbar, that if you got like four, four jump points that you could pick to automatically go back to all, always, you know, I would be like, I would put like one of the jump points to the, to the, 
side by side wall. Yeah, ro look. Ted Bundy and Joseph Mengi. <laughs> Dude, tell me. Right? Like, it's a dead ringer. Kind of, I think. Dude, yeah. The mutt muzzle. The uni. The fucking... The whole creepiness. Right? Fuck yeah, dude. We got him. Ted's dad. Ted's dad is... Dude, come on, right? I don't know, man. Maybe it is Joel Edgerton's dad. And, and this... They're brothers, right? Taryn and Joel? Like... He was really good in fucking Dark Matter, though. I really like Dark Matter. <laughs> but he's still probably a Nancy. Ain't everybody? Ain't it fucking everybody? Dude, that's pretty good. <laughs> You're cooked. You're done. Yeah, bro, bro. Dude, Dolph Lundgren probably is their half-brother. Dude, there's something peaceful just about, you know, freaking doing your, doing your little Miro. <laughs> I love building this thing out, man. We are kicking this shit's ass. Look at that. Who's better than us? Nobody. All right, what was this? These are the writings that were retained as exhibits for the alien property custodian, because but, dude, Tesla was a fucking citizen. He wasn't an alien. Fluid propulsion, dude. It would have been so sweet if Tesla... If Nazis didn't take everything over. Nazis are the worst, right, guys? <laughs> they freaking suck donkey ass. All right, back to our shipwreck. Walter told the Times reporter of the letter Fred Trump wrote to his family in German about the shipwreck on Chirikov Island, concluding with the words, We have hope that the United States government will now. There is only one 1,898 shipwreck listed on Chirikov Island in the history books, that of the schooner Elsie, which ran aground on the 25th of April, 1898. A story on the shipwreck in the San Francisco Chronicle on the 17th of July, 1898 listed 30 people on the manifest, including F. Trump. The Elsie left Seattle on the 4th of April, 1898, bound for the Kotzebue area, because of reports that natives on rivers were trading gold, which probably meant the rivers had gold. One of the passengers later told his hometown newspaper in North Dakota. Three schooners left Seattle for Kotzebue that spring and several others planned to join the hunt in an area identified by the Seattle Post Intelligencer as the newest field for which the Alaska-going contingent are heading. 30 men bought the 56-ton sealing schooner Elsie for $3,500 and- Bro, I mean, look at the way their fucking mouths turn down on the corners, right? Bro, they have like the same exact little crease right here, bro. Stop. Look at that. It is really easy to see once it's side by side with history to support. 
Is it their kids or is it them? Oh, you're right, dude. It could be straight up fucking clones. And that's the thing, too, is that these do feel like they're more than just kids, right? Because, dude, some of these, like, hit, like, dead ringer. You're right. They might. I don't know. I feel like they're somewhat tweaking with the shit or something. Carl Gebhardt had a fucking chiseled, squared jaw, brother. But yeah, dude, I think it's case closed on this. Bro, that's good. That was a good spot. $3,500 and spent about $50,000 for three years of supplies, one of the most complete outfits ever taken out of Seattle, the newspaper in Devil's Lake, North Dakota said. In addition to mining tools, equipment and food, they had 12 river boats. The group included 10 experienced miners, a doctor, an assayer, and Captain Elam Larson, who claimed to be an experienced sailor. It was afterwards discovered that he had no knowledge whatever of navigation and this caused all the subsequent troubles which befell the party the newspaper said. On the 23rd of April, a man in the rigging yelled that he saw land. But the captain said that they were at least 300 miles from land bound for Dutch Harbour. The LC hit the rocks of Jerkoff Island, then leased for the raising of blue foxes at about 1.30am on the 25th of April. The ship was grounded in about 3 feet of water some 300 yards from the land. They set up tents in which to live and had no lack of provisions. As they saved about half of the stock with which they started, the remainder being swirled by the salt water. The North Dakota paper said, Several of the men got drunk and soon a fire was lit in the moss behind the camp, which drew the attention of one of the three men who resided on the island, and who was in charge of raising foxes. He was very angry about the burning moss, claiming that it would spread over the entire island and that it would cause the destruction of the foxes. The paper said, The shipwrecked gold seekers put out the fire with shovel- Dude, you know what, though? You're right, because John John H. Mayer said, no, it's literally Hitler. He said, Imag imagine science <laughs> and Nazi shit and, <laughs> and frickin' imagine and extrapolate. So... You might be right. I think they are just cloners. They're like literally copies. They look like it, dog. They do. It's crazy. Fire with shovels and blankets. For three weeks, they were unable to get the ship to float free and then a storm destroyed the hull. When a passing vessel finally saw the distress flags, the captain stopped and transported them to safety. It took eight days to load their supplies on the rescue ship. Sorry, I got a tweet real quick. I said, it is crazy that Ted Boondly is Joseph Mengele's clone or son. These Libby's are everywhere. Dude, this is a dead ringer. There's no chance. This was their big plan, dude? I don't think a blog is considered a valid source, but I find informative. Dude, I don't care where where information comes from anymore, you know? Like, yeah, a first source could be a blog. It could be a person. Like, it could, like I take it, right? I'll take information from a man with a fucking vengeance in his living room, you know? So... Don't don't negate information that you get from blogs. Some of my best information I get from blogs. Dude, I bet I think Alex Putney's shit is kind of blogs. <laughs> Not really, but like, you know what I mean? It's just a dude. So there's good information everywhere, dude. Like they would say this isn't a good source, but you know, it has the truth in it and it has someone doing the best thing job that they can of of re recollecting and 
and sharing Otto Scorzani's words, you know. So, yeah, they're not perfect, and, you know, there's other sources that are better, like, other better primary sources or whatever, but, but yeah, we, we'll take information from anyone, right? We don't care. All information is good. Dude, even the bad information is good. You get information from, dude, every negative thing that happens to me on TikTok, um, you know, like, with the suppression and them deleting my shit, like, at the same time, I'm learning new things, too, like, about how they're suppressing or whatever, you know? Like, I try and take something. Because you're getting a ton of information from that. Like, you're getting a ton of information. Like, them false reporting my videos and stuff. Like, yeah, it sucks to lose all that. But also, at the same time, I'm getting confirmed that all these... Yeah, dude, Walter Cappy add brown eyes and look looks like Hitchcock. Oh, dude, that's good. That's, I feel like, yeah, I was, like, feeling that, too. Bro, this is so real. These are the same person, dude. Ooh, yeah, let's put Young Gates in here. Dude, what the fuck happened to him? Why did he... What happened? Matt Gates looks like a haunted doll who will kill your whole family. No offense to murderers, haunted dolls. Matt Gates looks like Carrot Top disguised as Adam Lambert. Oh my god. Crushed. Yeah, dude, what happened? Dude, all these people get this weird Mormon sheen and it's over. Oh my god. People keep texting us the Matt Gates photo to ask my dermatologist husband's opinion. And he just looked at it and said, oh no, several mistakes were made here. <laughs> Drag race regular season versus all stars. Oh my god. <laughs> Matt Gates got gender affirming care. Matt Gates are Botox. <laughs> Motherfucker looks like he's on a registry in Whoville. Oh my god, dude. Hold on, I need that first photo again. Yeah, this one. Because I feel like he looks significantly different now from uh, from his clone source, his dad, uh, you know, Herman Goring. Uh, does Otto Scorzani have any of these cloners? He's got to, right? I wonder, dude, what if, oh my god, what if an army of Otto Scorzani cloners... Decided to do the right thing and they fucking went rogue against all the Nancys. Oh my god. They would be the ones to do it, right? Otto did it. Otto turned on them. Oh, you got a link to the Trumps? Oh shit it. Wait, it says that it's acting like it's going to uh like a like someone's hard drive or something. It's not like a web page. He'll get it. Oh yeah, wait. Who were we putting with Walt? Oh yeah, Hitchcock. Dude, yeah, he this bro I mean, that would make sense, right? He's like a horror film director. In the disco. Okay, copy. I'll go grab it. Thank you. Uh, Hitch Coke, more like.
All these frickin' cloners, dude. He's making kind of a goofy face, but he doesn't have too many other, uh... Dude, it's these big ears! He doesn't have too many other pictures that are, like, straight on. They're all, like... Dude, we really need to get to the bottom of who this guy was. Like, where is he from? Why is he fascist? What the fuck? And also, I mean, I guess they they realized that they needed to get infiltrator. They needed to get white supremacist skin infiltrators. They had to get a bunch of, <laughs> yeah, race traitors. Or no, that's not what it is. Yeah, no. Yeah, they're like people who are black who are fighting for white supremacy. That's crazy, dude. Obama. Obama and his son Drake. So weird. So weird. <laughs> it's so freaking weird, dude. Faba, Faja. I love you, Papa. Papa, will you please drink child with me on s will you imbibe child with me on Sunday? We are the clones. We inherit the earth. Donka, Donka, Donka Shane. We love being in the Shustafel. Have you seen the stuff happening in Bangladesh? Oh my god, I I can't fucking Now what the fuck is going on? I was going to put on this Mysteries of Skinwalker Ranch. Blair's talking about some fucking real shit, dude. Fine. Fine, 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 fine. Fine, 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 fine. Bang. Let me guess. It has something to do with hatred and fear that Peter Thiel most likely is drumming up. Bangladesh protesters issue demands amid shaky calm. Ooh, what's that? Rage over inequality. Let's fucking go, dude. Here, let's find a YouTuber. Fuck the New York Times. I can at least judge better the lies that I'm being told with video. Uh, Bangladesh protests. Protests break out in streets of Bangladesh. They're going to be like, these monsters want freedom. They want fucking equality. Look at these disgusting thugs that we're going to gun down. Shoot on site. What is her name? Rhiannon? Rhiannon? Yuck. Oh, fuck. Sorry, guys. Says, sorry, why sorry. did they kill him in such a brutal way? The demonstrations ignited over a anti government protests and a shoot on sight order in the South Asian nation of Bangladesh. Inez de la Quatera is following this story and is here to break it all down for us. Good morning, Inez. Good morning, Rhiannon. And perhaps bowing to Rhiannon. public pressure, overnight Bangladesh's Supreme Court scaling back most of the controversial quotas that have sparked... You guys can hear it now, right? Sorry, I had it muted on accident. ...so much anger and deadly protests. A week of chaos in Bangladesh. Government buildings set ablaze. A mob storming the state broadcaster. Burned out cars lining the street. Dude, yeah, fuck those state broadcasters. Fuck Fox News. Fuck all these places, bro. 
I can't wait until the people have commandeered those stations. Oh, it's going to rock, dude. Can you imagine, guys? We're going to make TV that's cool and not lies. It's going to be so fucking sick. Bro, if any freaking Mr. Big Heads, like, I want, oh, yeah, I want to watch that, too, still. The, uh... What is, what's the guy who in Chicago who came and who took over the station and just danced around? If anyone wants to freaking get into some wild stuff. No, I'm just kidding. But that would be so cool. I'm sure you can't do that anymore. Like, <laughs> hack into the channel. I'm sure they have, like, so many ways to stop it. But man, it would be fun, right? It would be a fun idea to make a movie about, you know? If anyone's got any ideas, we could write scripts about it, you know? <laughs> but dude, that's what they do in um, Man in the High Castle. The rebels take over the news station for like 20 seconds and spit their message really fast. Yeah, if you had 20 seconds on the air, what the fuck would you say? Everyone are Nazis. The Liebensborns are real. No, see, so you can't get into that shit because they'll all be like, what? I don't know what you would say, right? It's hard. Streets as thousands of student protesters climb. You just got to keep it in the simplest terms, like. Everything on the screen is an act. And then tr figure out a hole to poke in, you know? Give them a look into this thing and then peel it all back. Like, dude, the Challenger thing really for me was the last. That was like, oh my god, they're capable of anything, dude. They literally blew up a rocket ship and and put it in front of us to control us. They're, they know no bounds. They have no limits of depravity. <laughs> you know what I mean? With police, over 110 people killed, including this woman's nephew, 16-year-old Imam Hossein. My nephew was an innocent kid, she says. Why did they kill him in such a brutal way? The demonstrations ignited over a new quota system that planned to allocate up to 30% of government jobs to the families of veterans who fought for independence against Pakistan in 1971. But overnight, the country's top court scrapping most of those quotas, hoping to quell the violence. Bangladesh's army deployed in the country's capital to enforce a strict curfew. <laughs> And the government imposing a nationwide internet blackout. The U.S. State Department, meanwhile, issuing a travel advisory, telling Americans not to travel to Bangladesh due to ongoing civil unrest. The U.S. Embassy in Dhaka saying in a statement, reports indicate hundreds to possibly thousands injured, adding the situation is extremely volatile. And that curfew has been extended by another day. It'll be relaxed in the afternoon for people to run essential errands, but otherwise people are being told to stay home with only emergency services allowed to operate. Hmm. Overseas now to the growing crisis in Bangladesh after weeks of deadly and violent protests. New video coming in tonight as authorities deploy the Army and impose a strict new curfew with a shoot on site order. Let's bring in ABC's Inez. De That's lunacy. That's like the fucking Haiti shit, dude. This is all Peter Thiel. This is all Palantir. Oh my God. It's all fucking fascist Nazis. Peter Thiel's whacked out on fucking meth dictating to the world that we need to fucking all kill each other. I, I think there's one person who needs to disappear. Well, there's a bunch of them, but... We're, we could start... We Dude, we'd get so far ahead if we started with one, you know, in particular. God, that would be rad. Here, let's finish this so I can get rid of it. When a passing vessel finally saw the distress flags, the captain stopped and transported them to safety. It took eight days to load their supplies on the rescue ship. Sorry, Another that was survivor loud. told his tale to the Wilkes Bar Times, saying that some in the group wanted to hang the captain, who was unable to use a sextant, and had no clue about navigation. 
that account said five men died of diseases brought on by exposure, while others said there were no fatalities. Some of the men returned home after the disaster, others continued to the mouth of the Yukon River, bound for the Klondike. The preceding winter, Fred Trump was reported to be at Circle on the Yukon River, according to an article published the 11th of January, 1898, in the San Francisco Call. It said that in the summer of 1897, Trump had tried to sell a half-interest in a claim he had in Dawson for $2,000 but could find no takers. A half-interest in a mine, site two claims removed had fetched $30,000 while Trump was gone, Sam Wall wrote. Two parties started on Monday to go to Circle City to find Trump, who was not supposed to know the value of his property, to buy it from him for those $2,000 perhaps, Wall wrote. One of the men chasing Trump was Tom Lynch, acting on behalf of a gambler named Goldie. There are several others about to attempt to overtake him, Wall. Bro, I didn't realize that Trump also had mining shit. Did you hear that? They said mine. He had a gold mine. <gasps> Do the Kennedys have mines? Dude, they're, it's all miners and shit. There are some fucking mining secrets that we don't know, dude. There's some, like, Anunnaki tunnels that they have some cool shit in that... Like, dude, maybe they found, literally found a time travel thing left behind by the Anu Nazis and literally child Trump crawled through it like a fucking bing bong bozo and then started this whole time warp loop that we're stuck in just like fucking Dark, dude. I need to rewatch Dark. That show ruled. Oh my God. Trump spent some of his time in the next three years in Bennett and Whitehorse where he advertised his hotel and restaurant as the newest, neatest, and best equipped north of Vancouver. He returned to Germany a wealthy man in 1901, married in 1902, and the authorities refused to restore his German citizenship because of accusations that he had left for North America to get out of military service. He died in the Spanish flu epidemic in 1918, when Fred Trump, Donald's father, was 12. Dude, I fucking doubt it. Dude, and he's a draft dodger just like his fu- Dude, Trump is a draft dodger just like his goddamn grandpa. What a bitch made bitch. And then died of the Spanish flu like a cuck, dude. Did he drink bleach? He should have drank bleach. He should have listened to his grandson and drank some fucking bleach, dude. That would have been great. I think I'm gonna go rewatch that too after having a different- Nitwitch view. Yeah, yeah, dude, right? I think I think it would be cool to revisit that because dude, like um like rewatching the OA, I can't believe how much shit that uh they had in there that like went over my head before, you know? Like I I really liked it on the second viewing way more. Um and like Kendrick shit, you know, like getting into meditation and then realizing that Kendrick's always talking about meditation and listening to him talk about it, you know, stuff like that. It's cool. Frederick Trump. Dude, I can't believe that President Bayrock, Barry Obama, Bill Barr, and Jeffrey Epstein all went to the same boys' summer camp. That's crazy, bro. All those dudes have to be someone. I'm telling you guys, right? Who are these people? We gotta, we gotta message Nick. What's his face? Although he's probably a Fed too, right? Isn't everybody? What's his name, Nick? Uh, what's the Epstein guy? Nick. Nick Bryant.
Here, let's just tweet at... Bro, that's literally Barack Hussein. <laughs> no, I won't do that. Brock. That's fucking Barry O. Bami. Bama. Sitting there, too. No doubt. Uh, right guys we're just gonna freaking blast let's just freaking get blasty okay let's just blast it out Like, dude, who are these other guys? Come on, right? We could do this. We could do anything, guys. We're incredible. Like, this dude is so fucking familiar, right? Tell me. Like, totally. Frickin' totes my goats, dude. What is that fucking sound? What keeps talking? When it was June, oh, this was like a month ago. Going through the yearbook, I happened to notice this photo of a girls group with a leering adult male rubbing his hands together in the periphery of the photo. <laughs> Interloking, yeah, who the fuck is this? Dude, this is so awesome that I can't believe that I've always wanted like a a case, dude, and we freaking got a, the case of the our lives, right? This whole thing is just so nutty. Let's find Jizz Lane Maxwell, guys. Come on, we can do it. Is this Lena Dunham? <laughs> then who's this guy? He's like, eh, eh, I'm gonna sell all of you for profit. I love selling human beings for sex, sex stuff. I'm a freak. What? Where's this lady looking? She looks kind of familiar, right? Dude, it does kind of look like Lena, right? It's probably your mom. Bro. Right? Yeah, it's Lena. This lady looks kind of familiar. This lady kind of looks familiar. Dude, all of them kind of... This lady kind of has like a odd look that looks kind of familiar. You think middle front? You think this is Jizz Lane? Really? Let's see what. Let's find some young Jizz Lanes. Oh, uh, young. Wait, is this her? Is this Jizz Lane when she's young? What do you guys think? Similar?
Dang it. I don't know. I can kind of see it. Let's find. Is there any young. Young photos of her. Just laying. Is this Jislaine? Dude, I don't know. I could kind of see it. Like, I bet, dude. Like, I know that they've been friends for a long time. There's never any young, you know, pictures of these people young. It's because they're a little fucking spies. I bet you're right, dude. Let's just put, let's just put a, is this Jizz Lane? Dude, it kind of does, it feels like, kind of like her. Dude, it all started here at this fucking Nazi camp. And here's Ghislaine, the center of attention. Perfect. Oh, damn it, 404, what the fuck, why? Elise Stefanik? <gasps> Is she one of these? She is a frickin', she is a Nancy for sure. Yeah, let's put her on the board. Dude. We are the fucking best investigators in the history of the universe, bro. The cops have nothing on us. We're incredible. All these mouth breathers. They think they're so smart, dude, and they're not. Where are those? I wanted pictures of Tesla's, uh... Trunks. I th I had them before. I thought I'd put them in the Miro board, but I can't. Couldn't find them. Dude, it is it is truly baffling that it's all of them. It's like. I mean, but at this point, you, like, have to have everyone, I think. It's too big. It's so big, dude. It's so vast. All right, let's watch some, let's have some fun, watch some stuff real quick after this. And then we'll call it quits for the night. What's how's her stupid name spelled? Elise Stefanik. Nancy. Who is she? She's probably. Dude, like that dude is someone. Like Anthony Hopkins doesn't feel wrong. Could be. Could be right. They're all somebodies. 
Roll somebody's. I wish they weren't. POWs after work. Yeah, dude, all these fucking Nazis everywhere. What did Bill, what did Nick, let's r just see real quick what Nick Bryant wrote about this. Did Jeffrey and William Barr and Barry Obama attend Interlochen in 1967? The answer is absolutely, dude. Frickin' one billion percent. No doubt. Interlochen cannot po- Uh, wait. Interlochen is a prestigious fine arts preparatory school in northern Michigan and- Oh, it's a school! I thought it was a camp! And Jeffrey Epstein attended Interlochen camp in 1967 as a teenager. Oh, okay. But the school disavows that two-time Attorney General William Barr also attended the camp in 1967 despite pictorial evidence that appears to tell a different story. At the top of the page, the picture shows teenage Epstein standing in front of his respective lodge at Interlochen in 1967 and a boy who bears an uncanny resemblance to a miniature <laughs> William Barr kneeling before his respective lodge. In fact, he could be a doppelganger for William Barr if he isn't William Barr. Dude, like, exactly William Barr. Interloking cannot possibly deny that Epstein attended the camp because he became a major booster for the school. Boy, oh boy, didn't he? They had the Jeffrey Epstein Scholarship Lodge on the school's campus. He also held soirees for Interloken alumni at his... New York townhouse, and of course he preyed on Interlochen minors. Jane, an Interlochen camp alumni, was one of four women who testified at Ghislaine Maxwell's trial. She testified that she met Maxwell and Epstein at Interlochen's summer camp in the summer of 1994 when she was 13 and they groomed her for SA that lasted more than five years. Jesus. Epstein was arrested at the Teterboro Airport. Two days later, Barr seemingly recused himself from all things Epstein. I'm recused from that matter because one of the law firms that represents Epstein long ago was a firm I subsequently joined for a period of time. And also, we're best friends, and we've been doing bad shit together since we went to fucking summer camp for the Nazis in 1967. Barr was referring to his tenure at Kirkland and Ellis, whose Jay Lepkowski colluded with Assistant U.S. Attorney Anne Marie Villafana to work out Epstein's corrupt sweetheart deal in 2007, which landed Epstein in a county jail for 13 months, even though the Justice Department was aware of more than 30 underage victims of Ep Epstein. Barr had additional reasons to recuse himself from all things Epstein in addition to the conflict of interest engendered by his employment at Kirkland and Ellis. Alex Acosta, who oversaw Epstein's sweetheart deal when he was the U.S. Attorney for Southern Florida, served in Donald Trump's cabinet as Secretary of Labor alongside Barr. Moreover, Bill Barr's Donald was the headmaster of Dalton School, one of the most prestigious pre preparatory schools in the United States when he hired an extremely unqualified college dropout, Nazi, not Jewish person, to teach math and physics at the school seven years after the above picture was taken. Interestingly, Donald Barr would resign from Dalton the same year he hired Epstein, so Barr had three solid reasons to recuse himself from all things Epstein. But the day following Barr's recusal, Tuesday, July 9th, a Justice Department annou official announced that Barr consulted his career ethics official at the Justice Department and came to the conclusion that he didn't have to recuse himself from Epstein's 2019 prosecution in Manhattan. However, Barr said he would recuse himself from an internal investigation that delved into Epstein's sweetheart deal in 2008 in which Epstein was sentenced to 18 months in jail and served 13 months, even though the Justice Department had an extensive list of Epstein's underage victims. Unbelievably, the Department of Justice 
ultimately ruled that Epstein's sweetheart deal, which covered up his crimes against numerous underage girl victims, was poor judgment. Throughout the 80s, Barr bounced between government service and a prestigious Washington law firm. In the wake of the 88 election, Bush the Elder installed Barr as first attorney general, uh, first assistant attorney general. In 1990, Barr became the Deputy Attorney General, which is the second most powerful position in the Justice Department. Barr's boss at the Justice Department was Attorney General Richard Thornburg, and the Department of Justice under Thorbor, Thorbor played an internal role in covering up the interstate pedophile network run by Lawrence King of Omaha and Craig Spence of Washington. That's the Franklin Scandal and Bill Barr's role model. Yes, it is, bitch. Which is discussed in the Franklin Scandal, a story of power brokers, child abuse, and betrayal. Thornburg was also a close friend of pedo pimp Craig Spence. Yuck! The Franklin Child Trafficking Network was massive, and it required three hijacked grand juries to cover up a state grand jury in Nebraska, a federal grand jury in Nebraska, and a federal grand jury in Washington, D.C. Thurnberg and Barr were at the helm of the Justice Department when their missions in Nebraska and Washington, D.C. perpetrated the egregious cover-ups. Thurnberg relinquished his position as attorney general 91 to run for the u.s senate and Barr became the attorney general Barr then put the finishing touches on covering up the franklin child trafficking network in fact william Barr specializes in cover-ups under his second watch as attorney general the epstein child traffic uh network was covered up despite the epstein network's myriad of Acknowledged procurers and pimps, Ghislaine Maxwell was the only person to take the fall, and the Justice Department under Merrick Garland went on to facilitate the cover-up. So, back on the aforementioned pictures, Barr had three conflicts of interest in the Epstein in the Epstein case that he sidestepped to deftly cover up Epstein's child trafficking network. If Epstein and Barr had a friendship, or in the very least were acquitted dating back to 1967, then he surely wouldn't would have had to recuse himself from all things Epstein. The picture show that Barr has a doppelganger or interlocan is lying. You, the reader, decide. Bro, how is no one noticing the fucking shocking Barry Obama in the fucking forefront, you know? Let's see if we got some extra pixies in here. Uh, we don't really have much extra. I wish we had better scans of these. Dude, that's Barry. That's him. That's for sure him, bro. That's him. What year was he born? This is 1967? No way. It says Barry Obama was born in 1961. This kid is like 10 or 11. He's lying by a couple years. He's Barry Obama has got to be born in like 1954 or something. Yeah, this is Mossad 101 Bar Club. For sure, dude. This is Child S Ring Mossad Club for German Nancys. And little Barry over here, he's like, I'm one of the special, I'm one of the special, uh, race traitors. Or what would they call them? What they, what would the Nazis call people that were, like, not Aryan inbred losers? Like, dude, I feel like this guy right here, this feels like a face that I know. And I wish it had higher resolution. Come on, Nick Bryant. This guy is someone. For sure. Who is that guy? We gotta know. Look at him. You guys know that face, right? 
You think that's Colin Powell? Ooh, I like that too. That could be true. I don't know though. There's something about it though. It's just scream. It's just like feels like the Barry Boy. Them big old fucking ears, dude. Them Dumbos. What is this pin that Epstein has on his pants? Interlochen Fine Arts Camp. Let's read the Google reviews for that and see how. Because the Google reviews for North Fox Island are bizarre, to say the least. Uh-oh, Paul's reposting, guys. Watch out. Are they still using this place to uh, recruit children? Yeah, look, they don't even let you frickin' search for uh, North Fox Island. All right, do you guys want to watch Mysteries of Skinwalker Ranch and then call it quits for the night? Since I began my channel three years ago, the most requested topic I've gotten, without a doubt, are skinwalkers. There seems to be a fascination among the masses with the modern day boogeyman. Now. I have done an in-depth look into the lore and backstory of the Navajo Skinwalker legend. This video is focused on a more specific area of the Skinwalker legend, a place where these dark witches are said to roam wild, alongside other supernatural beasts of all shapes and sizes. In recent years, there have been many movies and documentaries made on this rural ranch in the middle of nowhere, Utah. This is the strange and true story behind the Skinwalker Ranch. Before I get into the meat and potatoes of the spine-tingling mystery, let's get acquainted with the basics of the ranch and a brief overview of the Navajo culture and the role Skimwalkers play. Yes, please. Skimwalker Ranch, aka Sherman Ranch, is situated on roughly 488 acres of land. Safe to say, plenty of room for spooky stuff to happen. The ranch is located southeast of Ballard, Utah. Ballard is fairly well known for stories of UFOs and other paranormal anomalies. The name Skimwalker Ranch comes from the dark malevolent witches of Navajo lore, skimwalkers. The Navajo Nation covers nearly 18 million acres, or roughly 27,413 miles. The Navajo Nation is located in the area known as the Four Corners in the Southwest United States. Dude, Dante and Nicole, I'm trying to get them to go to fucking going to the Sun Road. I want them to go and fucking bang on those rocks. Like, dude, I know that thing's a door. Otto Scorzani tells no lies. And neither does Eric Orion. So, dude, I need them to go to Lake McDonald. I hope they go here. But yeah, Paul is absolutely going to try and plant dynamite in their van at some point. But they're smarter than Paul, so I have no concerns about it. Paul's truly the Sasquatch. No offense to Sasquatch, but he's kind of a big dummy. And Paul is that, you know, so. <laughs> dummy Paul. The Navajo actually have retained the largest land area among any Native American tribe, which, if you ask me, 
is truly tragic in the first place. From Arizona, Utah, and New Mexico, the Navajo lived and respected the land. With all cultures, the Navajo did indeed have figures of good and evil. It is important to understand the role and meaning behind medicine men and Thanks skinwalkers. For the -dub. First and hey, foremost, on, medicine men were spiritual healers. God damn! We've been streaming for four months. That's pretty cool. Even though they stop us every every freaking turn, I'm so proud of what we built. Fuck them. Look. Hey, look, Paul. You want to know what this is? This is called Thanksgiving dinner. You're cooked goose, bro. We got all of you goofy asses. So bad. God, you made everything make sense. Even Omar Mateen. Omar Mateen, he is also a Libby. He's just a different flavor of fucking Nazi. He's also a bitch like Paul Weisopel. The ugliest fucking drinks from the toilet bowl. That's you. Whoa. There we go. Protectors of sorts. They also had knowledge of herbs and other various remedies for physical ailments as well. Skimwalkers are essentially anti-medicine men. Instead of healing, protection, and guidance, their purpose is to curse, maul, and torment. Oh! Dude, this is me. This is my purpose, but for like bullies and abusers. I'm a skinwalker for people, for bad people who are being assholes. Yes. E, not Lucy. The Navajo name. Dude, we probably could curse these people if we all fucking try, did it together. That would be so awesome. To curse them with like frogs falling out of the sky just on them or something. Oh man, that would be beautiful. Name for the skimwalker has the ability to possess and disguise themselves as the animals around them. This is, of course, a crude and very brief introduction to what these entities are. If you would like a more in-depth exploration into skimwalkers themselves, check out my 20 minute long documentary on them. Now, let's get back to the ranch itself. Trying to pin down the start of the skimwalker ranch story is kind of hard, honestly. Between my reading from journalists, books, and research online, I could find that the most popular publicized claim seemed to have been in 1996. I do realize there are reports from around the area in history that shows people lived in the area before these 1990s reports, but the ranch itself didn't seem to get notable coverage until this time. I did find a timeline that shows a UFO sighting did occur in 1974, but this was 10 miles away from the ranch. The Desert News, a local Salt Lake City newspaper and its counterpart, the Las Vegas Mercury, had begun publishing a series of articles from George Knapp. These stories claim that the Sherman family was experiencing some truly terrifying events that you could only imagine in the movies. This all started after they had recently purchased the ranch. For reasons unknown, the ranch was abandoned sometime in 1987. The property was vacant for upwards of seven years, until 1994, when the Sherman family finally purchased it. Terry and Gwen Sherman, along with their two children, had thought they had found their dream home. A vast piece of land, a comfy house, and solitude. What more could you ask for? Terry was a cattle breeder, and was in the hopes that nearly 500 acres of land would give his livestock plenty of space to feed and roam. Not to mention, this could be the break he needed to take his livestock business to a higher status. Now, Terry had bought the ranch for a very good price, far cheaper than the land was worth. He was excited and honestly bewildered that no one else had jumped on the offer. Upon moving in, the Sherman family immediately noticed some odd things. They stated the number of deadbolts used to secure the home was insane. We're not talking about one or two deadbolts per door. We are talking three, four, maybe even five deadbolts Yo, on a single door. This also was the case for many of the windows as well. This was also the case for the doors on the inside of the home. They had found heavy metal chains attached to the walls, likely used to keep big dogs from escaping. The Sherman family initially thought the previous owners were just overly paranoid about home security. Well, they would soon find... The Shermans probably weren't feds, but it was co-opted by Robert Bigelow, who established NIDS to investigate. God damn it. It's always these feds, dude.
no doubt that on the Skimwalker Ranch, you can never be too safe. I have found experiences and claims of UFOs around the area on the ranch itself before 1996. In the 1974 book, The Utah UFO Display, a scientist report written by Frank Salisbury and Joseph Hicks, this book details nearly 100 alleged experiences from the Oneida County region, where Ooh. the Skimwalker Ranch just so happens to be. These experiences detailed stories of cattle vanishing into thin air and or being found mutilated beyond all recognition. That's the microwave black the black helicopters over America. Sightings of UFOs and orbs were also mentioned numerous times, as well as sightings of Oh, that's from Alex Akasha shit. Creatures with blood red piercing eyes. Apparently, even after being shot, these creatures were unhurt and seemingly unbothered. The mutilated cattle have been a part of the lore and area for decades. A retired U.S. Army Colonel, John B. Alexander, had conducted scientific investigations on the ranch, which revealed mixed results. Getting back to the Sherman family, they mentioned upon signing the paperwork they had noticed a lot of strange things in the agreements. One interesting thing was that the Sherman family was not allowed to dig on the land without approval from the previous owners. Which, if what? you ask me, is incredibly strange. That's and crazy. makes me think of the amount of potential dead bodies buried out there more than spooky paranormal stuff. But I digress. Even though everything felt weird, the f Dude, that would literally make me dig everywhere without asking them. I would say, what the fuck are you- what do you have buried out here? I gotta find it. The family went through with the purchase anyway. According to Terry Sherman, things got strange almost immediately. Literally, on the first day the family was moving in, they noticed a figure off in the distance in their southern pasture. What? As they observed closer, they could tell that it was a wolf. It was moving rather quickly in an odd S formation. This, of course, put the family on alert. Maybe not for the simple fact that wolves lived in the area, but the size of this wolf, according to Terry Sherman, was impressive, Dire to say the wolf. least. Terry firmly believes it was around three times the size of a normal wolf. At first, the wolf seemed friendly and non-threatening to the family. It approached them calmly and slowly. All the livestock seemed to be terrified. All but one curious calf, that is. This baby calf had its head sticking out between the metal bars of the fence. In what seemed like a split second, the wolf quickly ran towards the calf and attacked it brutally. Snapping its large jaws down on this calf's head, the wolf tried to drag the calf out of the pen. In a moment of bravery, Terry ran to his truck and grabbed an axe. He began to attack the animal and kicking its back legs to no what avail. The, frick? the wolf would just not let go of the calf. Terry yelled to his son to grab his 357 Magnum and bring it to him. Terry had shot at the wolf, apparently hitting it in the abdomen area. Even after being shot, this wolf would still not let go of the calf. It almost seemed as if this wolf was bulletproof. It apparently did not yelp or show any indication that it had just been shot, nearly point blank. Terry fired another shot at this rabid wolf, but again, nothing seemed to be bothering this monstrosity. Finally, after shooting this beast for a third time, it finally backed off, slowly. Your donation will help us. Oh my god. Your donation will help us to open more field offices. Like, dude, they're literally just a fucking fro It's a Ponzi scheme. Like, come on, man. What the fuck? She's president for an hour and she's already begging for money? Get the fuck out of here. What do you need money for? You're the president. Fuck off, dude. You killed Joe Biden, and now you need my money? No. To get more organizers on the ground, it will help us to defeat Donald Trump again this November. So, let's get to work. Mm. Thank you, and please take care. She's such a clone, bro. Clearly. Yeah, cop Melissa just said, or just said, money, please. Unleashing that intel power. Oh my god, nice. another ad? Are you fucking mm -hmm. kidding? How did you finish so fast? Magic. AI magic. Is this your size? What if processing power met AI magic with an Intel Core Ultra Processor from Best Buy? Uh, gives me another one, I'm losing it. This, of course, had everyone freaked out and uncomfortable. What animal could realistically take multiple shots from a 357 Magnum and still be standing just fine? Upon further observation, Terry could not notice any wound or blood on his coat anywhere. Apparently a fourth shot was taken and the wolf began to retreat more. Terry was concerned this wolf may be thinking about attacking the calf again, and since he clearly can't protect his livestock, he is terrified of that outcome. At this point, Terry called for his son to bring him his 30 6 rifle from inside the house. 
His son returned in no less than a minute's time. Terry quickly took aim and fired at the beast, but instead of dropping dead or even running away, this wolf just looked back at Terry like it was annoyed more than anything. Rightfully freaked out past the point of no return, Terry lets off another shot and this time can clearly see a piece of flesh rip off the wolf as it hits it this time. This still did not seem to phase the wolf in the slightest. Whoa. After this, the wolf would look at the calf and then back at Terry and proceed to run off back the way it had come from. Terry knew he couldn't just let this large wolf roam his land. He and his son strapped up and went after the beast. They tracked the wolf for nearly two hours, catching small glimpses of it running between trees and patches of woods. They came across a muddy bank where they found many of the wolf's paw prints. They followed them until they abruptly ended in the middle of the mud bank. This had perplexed Terry to such a degree that he questioned everything he knew. The wolf would have to jump 50 yards or so to have avoided leaving more tracks, which is just ludicrous. Wolves can typically jump up to 15 feet long and roughly 12 feet high, so jumping 50 yards or 150 feet is a real superhuman feat. This wolf had just vanished. Sick. After returning back home, Terry had picked up the piece of flesh he had shot off the beast. Terry noted that the meat was not fresh at all. Rather, it had looked and smelled. There are rumblings that there is a crashed UFO under the ranch. Ah. But rotten and putrid, almost as if it had been out in the sun for days on end. Terry, to this day, still questions what happened to him that day. Now, this was just the first day. I could sit here for hours retelling the plethora of stories the Sherman family claimed to have experienced. You can find those stories in the various books, documentaries, and films centered around this ranch. I wanted to relay this one in this video, as it is personally my favorite story from the Skimwalker Ranch legend. If you have seen any of the films or read the books, you will know this strange wolf shows up more than a few times. I also wanted to share a few shorter stories that really stuck out to me. Aside from little experiences, such as unpacking groceries and leaving the room to come back to find them all back out again, and things from the family just up and vanishing, Gwen Sherman reported some seriously creepy stuff happening. She initially brushed it off. That's what I was doing. I was looking for Colin Powell. I forgot. I want to see that comparison too. Yeah, it could be either or. I don't know. I feel like he's just got the long, lanky kind of vibe of Barry Obama. You know what I mean? It'll be either way. It's a horrible. It's a bad choice. Either way, it's not good for us. It means that either Barry or what's his face literally went to summer camp with Bill Barr and then Jeffrey Epstein. Oh man. I don't know. Wait, I feel like I have a way better image than that. Because the part in his hair is just shaved in, right? That's not like...
Could be either. We'll find out soon, I'm sure. Oh, it's very interesting, no matter what. It's very odd. Oh, wait, here's a young one. Mm, I don't know. I'm feeling it's more Barry. Like, I mean, it, it's both. We're going to keep both in mind. But look, I'm feeling like that chin's a little deep, right? <laughs> that chin's pretty deep, too, though. Fucking A. Like, it's weird that there's no child pictures of Barack Obama. Not many. I don't know, dude. It's someone. It fe it's it's got to be, right? <sighs> we'll see. One of these days I'll be thrown off a bridge like Isaac Cappy and you guys will know. Where did our skinwalker go? Where the fuck did I just put it? Oh, was it full screen? Dang it. Where did I put it? Did I close out of it? Oh, here it is. Office are going insane. These small events were leading Gwen to worry about the state of her memory. Gwen and other members of the family claimed to have seen tall, dark entities peering in from the windows at night. Fuck that. Eventually, even entering the home and watching them at the end of their bed. Don't like that. Uh, 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 uh. Beds. Aside from some serious poltergeist activity happening within the house, the mutilations of cows, strained lights in the sky, and even odd noises that would come from the ground, sounding almost like explosions. These events only continued to get worse and worse around the property. The noises from the ground interest me a lot, simply because neighbors claim to have heard them as well. And dude, those... These look like the basalt things that cover up the, uh... Like the pyramids in Alaska. They pour, like, covers on them. Well, adding just a bit more validity to the claim, in my opinion. To make things even worse, the Shermans had been seeing strange creatures all over their land. These creatures would range from Bigfoot to almost ungodly looking. Apparently, nightmarish werewolf hyena-like creatures would ravage their livestock and vanish into thin air seemingly. I could go on and on about these happenings. It seems to honestly never end. I have found a very interesting and captivating video series on a majority of these smaller events compiled by a channel name, Bedtime Stories. I would highly recommend checking out their coverage of the Skimwalker Ranch events. Eventually, in 1996, the property was sold to NIDS, the National Institute for Discovery Science, after the Sherman family could no longer stand the terrifying events and the financial ruin they were in from it. NIDS is a rather interesting group that focuses on the fringe sciences of the world, a group of highly respected and educated scientists who approach the world of the supernatural with a skeptic mind, but are open to what results may reveal. Let's get into some of the more boring details here. These details may be boring to those looking for a supernatural thriller, but there was actually a whole new mystery behind who recently purchased the land and what they were using the land for. Robert Bigelow, 
the business guru behind the Budget Inn motel chain, Bigelow Aerospace, and NIDS, bought the ranch for just $200,000. Bigelow claims he was convinced to buy the ranch after hearing the stories of mutilation, strange lights, and weird markings in the earth told to him by the previous owner, Terry Sherman. Bigelow allowed several studies to be carried out on the property, treating the ranch as an open laboratory of sorts. Initially, Bigelow stated he thought secret military machinery was responsible for the torment of the Shermans. Ultimately, though, it seemed to only fuel the legend more than providing any real answers. There seems to be a lack of information on what he had been doing and what studies have been going on there for the past 20 years. In 2016, Bigelow sold the ranch for a whopping $4.5 million dollars to an unknown corporation simply named That's it? And the thing had a fucking portal? And a bunch of skinwalkers? What do you have to say? Tell everyone what you have to say that's so important. Hello? You're screaming. You had something so important to say. Come on, say it. Say it. What, what were you talking about? You were saying, Wah! like that? Wah! Come on. Say hello. Oh, now all of a sudden she's on, the, she's on camera. She doesn't know how to talk. Come on, say it. Say what you got to say. Just tell everyone. This is insane what's happening right now. She's trying to pretend like she's not nuts, bro. Hey. This is this is nuts. She's going to sit there and squawk now. Named Adam Tanium Holdings. That is one serious return on his original $200,000 investment. The biggest question I have though is what was Unabtanium Productions? Is that what it was? Happening for the past. The look of shame. Yeah, she's just like this. <laughs> 20 years. What research was being done, if any? This is where the state of the Skimwalker Ranch truly becomes odd. Not to say a property known for strange and supernatural events isn't odd in itself, but once Adamantium Holdings came into ownership, so did a shadow of secrecy. Holdings. As far as I can tell, this holding company is a shell corporation, and their origins are, well, rather unknown. A shell corporation, for those who are unaware, are corporations that technically only exist on paper. They have no... Guys, we know who it is. It's the CIA, it's Peter Thiel, it's the Nazis, it's always them, it, everything is. And if it's not them, it's the church or something weirder. Real employees or office space, but have a bank account or passive investments like... Did I thank you, Icon? Thank you for the subble double like intellectual property rights or IP rights. Essentially, intellectual property rights to your favorite show or character. These passive investments make them money, thus technically making them a business. When this holding company purchased the property, they closed off all entrances with gates and signs. This is where things seemingly explode on the ranch. According to Robert Bigelow, he only agreed to sell the property as long as the research continued. Shortly Dude, there's gotta be a pyramid under the ranch, isn't there? That... that isn't there that map of pyramids in the U.S.? Oh, I don't know. Is there? But, dude, those things look like that basalt shit that they pour, like, in, in Alaska, bro. That shit looks exactly like, like those little mountains. Like, it looks like they could pour this, like, concrete that was, like, rock. It looked like rock afterwards. And they could pour it in like dome structures because that's the pyramid in Alaska is underneath a giant rock dome. After, it seemed the activity increased tenfold. And, and dude, all of the Nazis are fucking, I think, f running. I think they're all these mining companies, you know, the, and the, the Trumps and all these people. I think that they know that there are these Anunnaki or Atlantean tunnels that they like tapped into and they've been keeping secret from everyone. Probably. Right? And dude, yeah, f find that find that map that you were talking about of the pyramids.
Images of alleged UFOs have been taken over the homes. Because I bet that, like, no matter what, I bet that there's one because it sounds like there's a geomagnetic, like, weirdo point there, you know? And it seems like they have one of these in everywhere. And dude, like Washington State seemed like like the rain the the rainforest. The North America's only rainforest, <laughs> Washington State, had like a fucking megalithic city, like amazing old city or something there. It was crazy. I agree that those tunnels have to have been there before they use them for weird sex stuff. Totally, dude. And also just because they didn't make them. Like, it sounds like there was some cool technology that let them just zap tunnels into the ground or something. Because there's no way that... Dude, these tunnels that they're talking about are so vast. Like, there's no fucking shot that we have dug all these tunnels and no one has, like come and talked about it or anything you know like there's no way that they built like tunnels across america from world war ii you know like where they put the dirt like no one's no one's no one has a story of like people digging tunnels through their well or something you know like something weird like that like these shits have to have always been here for in terms of us but it always ends up as weird sex stuff yeah dude Dumbs, deep underground military Instead, fucking bondage dungeons for children. Go ask John Podesta. John Pod Ped Pedo Pedoesta. Sightings of lights and creatures have stayed steady. The mystery of exactly who spent four point five million dollars on the ranch still remained though. That is until recently. Sometime in 2017, the trademark for Skimwalker Ranch was filed for and was obtained in 2018. After a long-standing mystery, Brandon Fugel came out as the owner of the ranch. Brandon is a real estate tycoon and seems to be using this as publicity. The question still remains, why is the ranch suddenly so secured? What are they doing out there? Yeah, because of fucking, yeah, these guys. Because they, there is a pyramid there for sure. Does revealing the owner really change any of the decades-old mysteries said to come from the ranch? In my mind, no, not really. While knowing who owns the land is helpful for contact reasons, it really doesn't change the long history of unpleasant experiences on the land. In a recent documentary about the ranch, Hunt for the Skimwalker, the new owner says that he thinks people who don't believe there is something supernatural happening on the ranch are delusional. This gives me some hope that even though the ranch is highly secured these days, that research may still be going on inside those gates. Research into what, you might ask? I haven't the slightest idea. For a place so well known for the insane activity that would make the bravest explorers shite themselves, it seems the reports of skimwalkers are less common than you would expect. Many of the creature sightings have been attributed to skimwalkers, though, as the surrounding natives would claim. What truly Deep underground military butt stuff! Thank you, oh my god. I love it. Yes, needed that. ...resides on the skimwalker ranch. What makes this location such a perfect breeding ground for the supernatural? We may never really know, but for now. Up in uh, Idaho camping, would you look at this? I think I found an itch. That shit's a fucking pyramid, dog. <laughs> Play. Oh, dude. TikTok is such a busted ass app ever since the Nazis took it over. I think I found an itch. Well. Pyramid like not gonna uh, explore it this weekend, but gonna come back up here. Fuck yeah. We gonna get to that spot. Cause that's looking really uh like guys, seriously, we gotta start fucking exploring this shit ourselves. 
Dante and Nicole, they're going to get to the bottom of Lake, Lake McDonald. They're going to go to the fucking Lake McDonald in, or no, what's it called? Hold on, I know it. Where Hitler had his fucking little birthday party. Oh my god. It's gonna be so cute, dude. Hold on. Lake McDonald Lodge. That's what it's called. I know that. <laughs> but let's go look at it. It's so cute, dude. Here, let's just look inside of it and see if see if Otto Scorzani could be a truth teller or a liar. This is what the inside of the place looks like, okay? I don't know. I'm pretty sure that that could definitely be the fucking same place that Otto Scorzani has pictures. Oh my god. And yeah, look, it's the exact same shit, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, Otto Scorzani tells no lies. Dude, Nazis live here. I'm sorry. Wait, who who lives right here too besides Dane? Someone just said uh, it's uh it, you're talking about it's my backyard or something. Who was that? Uh, was it Mal Avery? No. I forget. I'm sorry. I have a bad memory. I remember the things that you guys say. It's just hard to attribute it sometimes. Who the fuck was it? L grab? Blank's dead. That's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dane, Dane lives nearby too, but yeah, <clears throat> dude, this is like, this is, this is like the fucking hang for the Nazis right here, bro. Here, let's look at, uh, pull up our friend real quick before we blast off. But dude, I need, I need Dante and Nicole to fucking go. I need them to have a metal detector or just go up to this door. Dude, like, no, truly, they'll just walk up to the fucking thing and, uh, you know, the, the, like, they, what's his face? Auto scores 80 said that if you walk up to the door, people will stop you. Do it. Dante and Nicole will do it. They've been arrested before. They're sh they're fucking brave as hell. They're way braver than me. My friends, my friends are cool as hell and they're brave as hell. Yeah, you live right up here? Dude, it's so pretty up here, but when but it's really pisses me off that these Nazis just decided, "Oh, we're just going to take this. Oh, here's new Bavaria. This is where we live now." Like, it's bullshit. Ugh, it's not loading. God damn it. Google Google Earth sucks balls. Ugh, just wanted to show you the Nazi door. Oh, god damn it. Let's just fucking look at Veil of Invisibility. Dude, and that's the other thing too about them deleting all my fucking accounts is they they fuck I mean I mean I have it still saved. Everything exists, but like you know, we did all this Alex Putney work. We're just trying to educate the masses and they want to put us down. It's so typical. Just so typical. All right. Hold up, dudes. We're getting there. We're getting there. My computer's about to fucking croak anyway right now. Miro's mad. OBS is mad. Everybody's mad. What the hell? Everyone chill. Is this is the show still streaming? Is it choppy? Who knows? The only good Nazi that ever existed was Otto Scorzani, and even then he was only good for like a couple days before he died. 
Okay, dude, here you go. You're going straight here, right? This is going to the Sun Road, okay? You're going up there. And you are freaking going right into this little thingamabob. There's a tunnel here, and you're going to freaking go in, okay? Look, and when you go in, there will be a dude here, okay? Look. See, there's the tunnel. Uh, Dante and Nicole are going to go in there. And Paul will have already put the TNT. Dante and Nicole, guys, have been working behind the scenes with Paul Weisopel. The FBI doesn't know about this. Um, but Paul Weisopel has been plotting to help us uh, destroy the CIA. And he was like, yo, I'm going to double agent for you guys. And we were like, yo, Paul, this is the cool, truly the coolest thing you could ever fucking do. And he's like, yeah, I know. I need to redeem myself from my history of horrid choices and and being tricked like a buffoon, you know? Like letting all these old Nazis talk me into doing shit that I didn't want to do, but I did it anyway because I'm a little bitch. And I need to make up for that, right? You know, Paul is saying all this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, buddy. Yeah. You know, you got to be fucking... Oh my god, what is this? How to become a Rosicrucian initiate? Guys, there's just too much to cover in a whole fucking day. Right? But... But yeah, anyway, so Paul's like... I'm working with Dante and Nicole. That was what that whole... The whole thing where they saw... You know, where Paul was stalking Dante and Nicole. That was just first contact... Because he's actually going to help us sabotage the FBI. It's, dude, it's so fucking awesome. Do not tell the FBI. They will be so mad if they find out that me and Paul and Dante and Nicole are all working together. Because we're supposed to be enemies, right? But Paul has learned the error of his ways. He said to me, I'm sorry for all of this bullshit. I am, you are my best friend. You're the only one who thinks about me. Thank you, Cat Dad. I'm so sorry for taking all of your accounts. It's just what I have to do for my work. I said, it's fine, Paul. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You're going to have to... You're going to owe me, though. One of these days, you're going to have to have your Mr. Robot moment, right? And you're going to have to go fucking... You're going to have to go do something brave, Paul. And that is not including... This is not bravery, Paul following like how many fbi agents did you have in this fucking winnebago you little freakazoid you know how many did hitler own land in the usa yes of course he did let me guess did hitler own land in the usa did hitler own land in the usa now i Hitler on land in the USA. Hitler on land in the USA. Now is so. Is the answer yes? I don't want to have to read this. I'm gonna take a picture of it though and throw it in the mirror because, I mean, everything goes in the mirror. Dude, I truly believe we can recreate our own new reality in the Miro board if we just put enough pictures together and different photo comparisons, okay? Adolf Schmittler, absentee landlord? The Fuhrer is portrayed as nothing more than an absentee landlord. The 1942, the mayor of Kit Carson, Colorado, revealed that Hitler inherited the grazing land from relatives in Germany. Co Dude, oh my god. 1,500 The spread was used for neighboring ranchers for grazing cattle? Dude, this has all been plotted from the start. Where did it go? This is all too much, guys. This is all too much for my little cat dad heart to handle. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm getting I'm gonna ad need a new headline, ads right? for Goodbye yeah. Nancy. You got any ideas? Carparts.com. I thought I turned that shit off. Uh oh. Oh, unplug. The Rosicrucian Legion is so much crap. 
Is it like Freemason shit? Is it like everything? Freemason shit with weird rituals for doing sex to each other? Get the fucking up, shake that ass boy, get that ass moving, come on Polly boy, shake that tush, oh what's so boys, I gotta see it, give me that scrumptious tush, little bushy, <laughs> give me that tush, give me that baby tush, that's the flattest ass that I've ever seen, and I need to get the Fuck away from that That's the worst tush I've ever Seen my bud Oh my god it's inverted What's up with that <laughs> Reverse ass He has got a reverse ass Look at that It goes in and out It is concave that's fucking weird Cause Paul doesn't have a butt Cause he's got no fucking He's not a slut <laughs> And nobody wants to fuck him <laughs> Hey Paul, but Look at this big old fucking Sasquatch All you guys ever seen a Sasquatch? Yes you have, he's right here, the man watch Look at my Paul friend, he's my only friend in the fucking world And the only way he shows me I love him He fucking follows Dante and Nicole What's up, Will Polly boy? If you gotta follow someone, come on to Brooklyn, boy You know where I am, buddy, come watch me research your dumb ass all day, buddy boy Hey, come on Show me how you can watch me research you and tell me that you're gonna hurt me all day, ever. Let's get grimy, let's get so fucking grimy. One or zero point two five, let's fucking. Ugly 
silly little man you have no fucking confidence cause your dad is Hitler you were grown in a petri dish Blair it's okay we like IV IVF <laughs> Hey, Peter Thiel, chill out. We are gonna make fun of you forever until you disappear, bud. Stop taking all my accounts away from me. Leave me alone, buddy. We're just trying to have some fun and dance. That's it. That's all we're trying to do is dance and have fun, okay? Be a nice guy, Peter. Stop being a weirdo. Everything you do is weird. Sweaty ass, man. What are the differences man. between a sound bar, a home Stop theater, it. and a box? Stop it. Okay, good night, guys. Thanks. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you all. I love doing this show. I love hanging out with you guys. I wish that they wouldn't throttle us. I wish that they would let me do this and do a good job at this. Because I, I just want to do a good job. I'm not telling any lies, am I? And if I did, I would pay the consequences of that. I would, I would either fix it or they would sue me. But... So far, nothing. So, free me. Free me. I'm never going to quit. Free me. Come on, let's just let our battle and our wits play off each other and see who the fuck wins. But you guys know who would win. And that's why you play dirty. It's because we are... <laughs> the cat dad is the messiah the CIA has been waiting for. <laughs> we are Lieutenant Aldo Cat Dad Rain, Messiah for the CIA, Messiah for the destruction of the CIA. Yes, cucks, CIA come in ass agency. That's what they like. I mean, there's nothing wrong with getting a little come in your ass, but I know that the boys at the CIA would very much not like other people to know that they have come in their ass, but. We do know, guys. We know, and you're never gonna ever get that. We're 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 always gonna know that, okay? Forever. The cat is out of the bag. Look, look at this cat. Look at this cat, dude. We did extra work tonight. Oh my god, I keep doing this. Come on, Miro. Come on, come on. Like, yeah, we got a lot of pictures, but it's like not that much to make this big of a deal out of it. Like, you're being very dramatic. Bro, this is fascinating. We're amazing. This is going to definitely get us killed, but it'll be worth it. It'll be so funny when someone finds the, like, archive of all this in 200 years after the fascism is finally defeated. And they're like, wait, oh my god, 200 years ago these goofballs were fighting this shit and they just AI'd them out of existence. This is what a great what a great moment in history. This content's incredible. And then then the nitwitches will finally get their flowers. And we will be world re renowned. And they'll say, oh my gosh, these kids are the revolution. But we'll have already been dead like a hundred years. Wild world. Anyway, good night, guys. Appreciate you. Have a good night. I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Yes, I will. Because this train never stops. You are a revolutionary. Don't forget to fucking say that. Say that when you, when you go to bed. Say that when you wake up. Do your breathing exercise when you get up. Do, say, I'm a revolutionary. I am more than just my physical body. I'm a vibrant and boundless being connected to the infinite possibilities of the universe with an open heart and a curious mind. I embrace the journey beyond the scene. I trust in the innate wisdom and the boundless energy that surrounds and flows through me. Together we explore, discover, and grow. Okay? So say that. Say I'm a revolutionary and go about your day. And then we're going to fucking... We'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> Alright? Bye! Thanks for hanging, guys. You're the best.